hello, 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 welcome. If there's a little delay there, it's because my buttons aren't working again. Oh, oh, they are now. They kind of catch up sometimes, they go a bit slow. Hello, hello, welcome. It is Fox here. Hello, welcome. I've got buttons. I can't show you because because the, the string's not long enough, but I've got buttons now, thanks to Chris, who gave me his buttons. They sometimes go to sleep. But I think you should be able to see and hear me. Let me just double check. Uh, yes, I think you should be able to see. I'm just going to test my buttons because I can do this now. Slap it on. Yes, I can do that. Slap it on. <laughs> They're working again. If I need to, without even thinking about it, I can quickly go to, you know, the... Or I can come back, or I can pop things. I can pop things in the chat like that. Look, there's things in chat. <gasps> I've got buttons. I've got... I know there's 25 of you watching. I can pop to the end title. And I can come back. I can do all kinds of things. So thank you very much to Chris from Gross Models who's watching. Yes, I have buttons. Yes, I spent all day, last couple of days, setting them up. So happy times. Anyway, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome to Gumpler Times. Um, as you can see, I'm working on decals. Uh, and as I've been doing with some of these builds for this big Cesarbi build, I just thought I'd hang out with you guys because it gets quite boring when you sat here for like 12 hours just sticking decals on no one to talk to. So I thought I'd hang out with you guys. I just need to clear my glasses because they've got some schmutz on them. But hopefully you can uh, see and hear me okay. Uh, do let me know. Just cleaning my glasses off. Uh, so tonight I'm just going to be working on my decals. I've just done, basically so far I've done them. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking, I'm really taking my time with these as well. I'm going slowly, slowly, slowly. Now if you're not sure what this project is, uh, this is the Master Grade Sazabi Verkar. Bandai Master Grade, uh, Gunplaz. However, it's also a Patreon reward build for my uh, lovely, lovely, one of my patrons, George, who's a lovely, lovely fella, because he's uh, supporting me at top tier. He gets a, uh, he's in on the old Patreon reward scheme, which is a Master Grade uh, Gunpla of your choice. So I'm get, he's getting a big fat Cesarbi, but it's not being built as a regular Cesarbi. That might be a bit of a giveaway. It's being done as a Cesarbi Verkar, Ver Shanghai Dragons, because he loves Overwatch, he loves Shanghai Dragons, Ver Borderlands. It's going to have a Borderlands style paint job. So, so far in the build, there is a video build series, but it's Patreon exclusive. You have to be a patron to watch it. So if you're not, do go along. Uh, I'll put the thing in chat. There you go. I can do that now. I can press buttons. Uh, if you'd like to watch the build series so far, uh, do pop along and become a patron if you're not one already. Uh, it is Patreon exclusive. But I'm doing these live streams available to everybody just so you've got something out of it. Uh, just so I'm putting up some content. The difficulty with the Patreon exclusive content is I can't do anything else at the same time. So you get like a, a sudden gap in the stuff to watch. So yes, we're going to be working on this. It's George's reward bill, but it's going to be painted, like I say, in the... It's going to be, instead of being painted to look like a 30 meter or 25 meter mobile suit, it's going to be painted to look like a 20 foot tall mech. It's going to be in the style of, or kind of influenced by Diva's mech from Overwatch. So it's going to be 20 foot tall, not 20 meters tall. There's going to be a figure in the little diorama that'll give the scale away. And it's going to be painted in the sort of color scheme of Diva's mech for the Shanghai Dragons. Uh, and it's going to have the Shanghai Dragons logo on there. And there's going to be other stuff as well. So it's not strictly going to be a Gumpler paint, even though it is. But anyway, yes, that's what we're going to be doing tonight. As always, uh, this is one of my regular streams, or this is a normal stream layout format. So as always, you can see the chat over here. If you want to join in, I'll be giving some stickers away later on at some point. So if you want to join in the live chat and have a chance to win stickers, do make sure you're watching this on YouTube. There's a YouTube icon. If you're not watching it on YouTube, click the little YouTube icon that's down here in the corner of the screen somewhere under the video player uh, that'll take you to youtube where you can join in the live chat if you're in chat and you want to get my attention i've got the ipad here in front of me do put your comment in big fat capital letters so i have a chance of seeing it uh, although i'll be focusing on doing little fiddly decals so good luck with that uh, you can if you want do a super chat which puts your chat in a, a big color box and also makes a noise and i'm able to see it then uh, or you can of course um What's the other option? There isn't another option. <laughs> that is the other option. I was going to say, drop me a text message, but no, don't do that. <clears throat> Give me a call. Call me on the telephone. There you go. Just write to me. If you'd like to get my attention, write to me on a self-addressed stumped envelope postcard to BBC Television Centre, London, W12, 8QT. Address it to Pebble Mill at 1. Uh, dear points of view, why, oh, why, oh, why? I don't know. 
So yeah, so do a super chat if you want to get my attention. And don't forget, as always, we've got the stream boss battle still ongoing. Kevin, Cy Reynolds is your current stream boss. It's a bit shameful. Nobody's working to get his health down. He's been there for months now. He's just sitting there lording it over you. Uh, you can do a super chat. Every time you do a super chat, that'll take a bit of his health down. Or you can put a tip through the tip jar, streamlabs.com forward slash model making guru. Every time you do a super chat or a tip, it takes some of his health off. The more you put through as a super chat or a tip, and the more of it health is take off. And if you get him down to zero, you then basically win all the money that has been raised through tips and super chats. You'd actually win the money. You then get to go to Games Workshop or Forge World and buy whatever you order, whatever you want from Forge World or Games Workshop. Or if you're in the EU or UK, you can do it through Goblin Gaming and get more bang for your buck. Uh, you basically tell me what you want. I order it for you and it arrives on your doorstep. There you go. So you win a budget to buy as much Games Workshop Warhammer stuff as you choose. If, you go to, if you're in the EU or UK and you go to Goblin Gaming, you can get other stuff as well as Games Workshop. So there you go that's how it works and as always very very quick big shout out to my channel supporters a all my lovely fluffy patrons thank you very much for supporting me you keep the lights on i earn all my most of my income through patreon uh, also emodels.co.uk your one-stop shop for all your model making needs and of course goblin gaming your one-stop shop for all your tabletop gaming needs with 20 percent off of uh, games workshop Malifaux and Conflict 47 at those. Addresses for both of those in the description below the video. If you use, if you want to help this channel out bigly, do use the link for Goblin that's in the description below the video because that's my affiliate link. That tells them that I've sent you. And as well as you getting massive savings, I get a little bit of commission on that. So do use that link if you want to use it. Sir Reynolds says, I mean, at this point, I'm no longer your Lord and Saviour. I'm basically God Emperor. Yes, he has been up there as a stream, but we've only, the black bits, if you've not played this, the black bits is where his health's been knocked off. He started off with 100,000. He's now got 75,000. Yeah, there's not a lot of fighting going on. It's like Aviad was there for about two or three months. Colin, uh, Colin, who the hell's Colin? Uh, Kevin's been there for about six months now. So you need to be getting your fingers out and getting him out because he's lording it over everybody now. Uh, anyway, before we get going, let's have a quick look at chat to see who is in very very quickly uh, i want to crack on so i'm not going to be doing too much of the waffling in advance uh, pascal was the first in saying almost time before i've gone live uh, so pascal is in chris at gross models cy reynolds chris and cy are two of your mods they're lovely 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 dad's in as well he's also a mod uh, they're lovely people they'll look after you they'll keep you safe but if you cross them they'll burn you alive and bury you in a small cardboard box full of dead cats I don't know where that came from. So don't cross them, basically. Snowman HFC, welcome Snowman, is in. Uh, Jamie Bowen, hi everyone, welcome Jamie. Quano Man is in, Helco Quano Man. Uh, we have uh, Roadkill Raker. Man, now I want a glazed donut. Yeah, talking about donuts in chat, and I'm like, oh, I've just had me tea, and now I want donuts. Oh! Uh, let's have a look. Dad has just had two Belgian chocolate eclairs. I feel sick. Nonsense. You have to eat 35 Belgian chocolate eclairs to feel sick. Uh, Paul Di Tommaso is in. Hello, people. Welcome, Paul. Uh, we have who else is in? Uh, do do Phil Lewis trickling fountains and waterfalls. Oh, that's because I was talking about having a wee. I went before I came. He's probably an expression. Matron. Uh, let's have a look. We have Swig and Pig. Evening all. Welcome, Swig and Pig. I appreciate, of course, most of you will be out in the pub getting absolutely sponged. So that's fine. I don't mind. We've got currently 31 viewers, according to the little widget on my button box. Thanks, Chris. That's brilliant. 31. I can't show you. I really can't show you. It's got a few flaws, but I'm getting used to it now. So I can't show you the fact it tells me that oh, we've just lost three people. <laughs> Thanks. We've just gone to 28. Why are you order? <sighs> Quite a man says big fat capital letters. Stefan Lass says, hello, stumbled across this and thought to hang around for a while while tinkering with other computery things. You're more than welcome to hang around. Have me on in the background. Most people have me on in the background in real life as well, actually, sadly, unfortunately. Uh, but most people just tend to have uh, me on in the background while they crack on with something else because there's not really much to be done for watching me do things. But I'll sit there and I'll talk to you in chat. Ask me questions. I will give you answers. Chris is playing Destiny. Uh, Destiny 2 or Destiny 1, dude? I'm guessing Destiny 2. Space Hamster is in. Hey all. Uh, you're going to head to head with Fester in about 25 minutes, says Phil Lewis. Uh, why? Does Colin have a live stream? Uh, I didn't realise that. I hadn't, know, I hadn't remembered that he'd had a live stream. That's probably quite bad then. Colin, if you're watching this, I do apologise. I totally didn't know you were doing a live stream. Oh, I feel bad now. Uh, is that is that his 3D printing thing? <laughs> Uh, oh, I feel really bad now because I didn't I didn't know he was doing a stream tonight. Oh, 
Darn it. Well, at least this is, if you're doing this 3D print thing, at least it's totally a different audience, I'll guess. Hopefully. So I'm not impacting on Colin's viewerships. Uh, do, 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 do. Very, very quickly, I shall send Colin a quick message just to apologise. Talk amongst yourselves for a moment. I feel bad now because I, I, I try not to, you know, ow. I try not to crunch into other people's streams. Uh, let me do a very quick message. Where's Facebook? Oh, I hate using Facebook on the phone. Do 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 One second. Uh, talk about yourselves. Do do do. Right. Okay, right, let's crack on with some work anyway. I'm going now, it's too late to stop. I can't suddenly stop, so. Oh, right, so yes, I've got these decals done so far. <clears throat> Just a handful. Some of the, I'm going to be using a mixture of... I have the uh, official decal sheet. I have my two Shanghai Dragons decal sheets that I had made up, which are basically the same, but I've got red and a white tip tail. Uh, these were made up by a place that I paid I don't know I can't remember who they were some American guys uh, it's online you go online I can't remember what they're called now you say here's a design here's some here's some, here's some um, Photoshop work please can you make this into decals and they say yes and then you get some good decals so I'm sorting those out at the moment I'm trying to get them back in the bag now uh, I can't remember what they're called Damn it. I like to promote the kind of things where I get stuff but I totally can't remember uh, Snowman says, I'm teaching a six-year-old how to play Modern Warfare and I'm so proud he's amazing. That is cool, but it is a certificate, what, 15 game? I don't know about that. Maybe six is a bit young for that kind of content, I would have said. Uh, Space Ham says, if we're talking video games, I've recently started playing Overwatch and I'm shocked to find I like it. And then he says, holy crud, I just realised it's on topic. Yes. I've also got... Um, let's have a look, a collection of all these decals, which are basically all my old spare decals. I've got some Xeon stuff, I've got all these, I've got lots of little warning decals, tons and tons. I've got some U-boat stuff, some photo etch, I don't know why. This is all my basically spare, like, leftover decal collections. Never throw decal sheets away, even if you've got, like, two decals left. Like, I've still got the stickers. These are stick vinyl stickers from my Comlock, which I've now sold. It's gone, so I don't even got that anymore. So I've still got these. So there you go. I just never throw decals and things away. I don't even really throw stickers away because you never know when you might find them useful. Uh, oh, I think it's the Huey Buddy Build group build. Oh, do you know? I feel bad now then. I feel bad now. Yeah, oh, I'm such a spoon sometimes. I totally hadn't realised it was t uh, today that he was doing that. Uh, oh, I can't get into... Oh, I can't get into... <laughs> I can't unlock my phone because I've got my gloves on. Right, that's just annoying that I can't get into that. Uh, oh well. Oops. Chris says he's playing Destiny 2. Can't type much, getting shot. Yes, don't get shot, dude. Right. So let's get on with some work. So yes, all I've done so far is a few of the kit decals and the big... Uh, this little Shanghai Dragons one. This is where normally a Cesarbi, the Cesarbi, uh, well, the SO1 mark would go. Uh, and then you'd have like the little Xeon symbol. I've replaced that with this. Uh, I've not used these decals before. And because they are custom made, uh, I'm just testing them out. They do, the film is a little bit thicker than usual. You can see it's quite shiny. But I'm not bothered if decals are shiny at this point because they're going to get painted over and matte varnished and weathered anyway. Um, because it's custom made, of course, they're not pre-cut. Just one big sheet. So if I want to use a little decal, I have to cut the decal out and then trim around the edge as close as possible to minimise uh, the amount of film that's left over. So that's what I'm doing. They are quite thick film, as many sort of custom made decals are. So I'm doing a lot of extra uh, microset and microsol. Uh, where's my brush gone? 
So I've done given these about three or four caps. I'll give them another quick cap, then I'll put it to one side. Uh, but it's the idea is the micro set and micro sol. I never remember which is which. Uh, with the micro sol, the idea is just to slowly eat away the clear film and thin it down and help the decal bed to the surface. And if you get if you if you're careful enough, you can kind of eat away with the micro sol or the clear film enough that you're just left with very thin film and then the decal because the ink is of course on top of the clear film so if you eat away the clear film you can you can almost fade it away without affecting the printed film if you go too far you'll end up with a more and more transparent decal because you'll just eat all of it away uh, so we'll just get these on now i haven't gloss varnished this uh you don't need to it depends on the decals bandai decals are good enough that you don't need to necessarily gloss varnish the surface also I've not gloss varnished it, so it means I can be a bit more handy with the micro set microsol. And I'm not going to get little watermarks if I go a bit too heavy with them. Uh, and it's a smooth paint job. Ooh, Kenneth. Kenneth, thank you very much, Kenneth. You're very kind. Keep streaming, Fox. Oh, I will. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, thank you very much for that, Kenneth. You've taken a little tiny bit of Simon's health off. Simon, you should be nervous. But thank you very much. I appreciate that. You're a lovely, lovely... Kenneth's lovely. Kenneth, Kenneth lives in Australia. It's lovely. Nom, 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 nom. It's one of my very dear friends. He says, don't feel bad, Fox. It was an honest mistake, and Colin isn't building a Gundam, so it's a totally different audience. Keep streaming. I do feel bad a little bit, because I, I didn't realise Colin was... I knew he was doing the buddy build, but I didn't know he was doing that tonight. So we'll put that there. The question is now where I put these things as I do them. Uh, I've got I've got over here, I've got a, a little sorting tray of bits. At the moment, this is just legs. So these are just all the parts for the left and right leg. And that's the first bit I'm focusing on at the minute is just the just the legs. As I'm dragging my little piece of tissue with my water on and getting water everywhere. Fantastic. Uh, so what have I got? I've got a couple of pairs of tweezers. I've got a cocking tail stick. I've got some, a cotton bud hedgehog. I love that. When you first get cotton buds and they make that. If you ever take a handful of cotton buds and try and put them back in a pot, you'll never get that. You'll never do it. It's never happen. You can't put them back neatly. Uh, a brush, an old brush for moving things around, and of course a small tin of the, well, it was warm water like five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. So let's crack on. So we've got that one done. Uh, -do 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 -do. I can't wait to see your next Gundam build, says Juan Ferreira. Well, once this is completed, we've got a lot to do on this yet. Once this is done... Uh, I do have the perfect grade Millennium Falcon to get on with because I've got to do that Bill Free model. So, yeah. So it's me a little while. Right, I can't I can't do the other one of these yet because I need to make sure I know this is left because these are sorted into left and right. So I can't just dump him back in because I need to make sure I don't get them mixed up. So I'm going to do this one and put it over there. And then I'll just crack on with, I'll do all the right leg. I think this is the right leg. I'll just do the right leg first and then we'll do the left leg some other time. So let's see what we have. Uh, except that's not the right leg, that's the left leg. Your spoon, let's do the left leg then. So we're doing the left leg, not the right leg. Do, 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 do. So do we have anything on thupper thigh? I think we might have like one or two on thupper thigh. Do, 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 do. I don't know which is left and which is right. Slade Wilson, thank you very much, Slade. That's very, very kind of you. I really super appreciate it. It's another little bit of another little bit of health from Kevin taken away there. It won't have come up on screen yet. You're probably thinking, what am I talking about? Wait for it. There it is. Let's see. <laughs> uh, do, do, do. Juan Ferreira, oh cool, it's Bandai. I prefer this over the Warhammer. No offense to your Warhammer fans. Yeah, no, no. Don't worry about that. I prefer both to both. Right, so on the upper thigh. Now I don't know which is left. I got them mixed up, so either of these could be left or right for the upper thigh. I think they're not I think it's easy come, easy go. Hey Bray, bassist. So I think it's easy come, easy go, so it doesn't really matter. Then again, I'm not exactly doing a Cesarbi, am I? I'm doing a sort of not Cesarbi. So, in terms of upper thigh, upper thigh, 
I've got li literally two decals. Possibly four. Uh, 53 and 52. Does that mean 53 and 52 on the others? Oh, yes, it does. So on the instructions here, without being able to read Japanese, it's only showing that side and the other side on the other leg. Little tiny decal. So I'm thinking what would you put on the inside, but it's saying 53 and 52 on the other side for both of those parts, the knee and the leg. So that's fine. So I now know. So I'll put that there. Uh, I'm painting Warhammer figures during a Gunpla stream because I'm wild and free and just want to watch the world burn, says Space Hamster. This is correct. Snowman says, we've changed to Fortnite because he was going to smash my controller. Yeah. Oh, I'm sweating a little bit. It's warm in here. Yeah, Call of Duty, six-year-old. Mm. I know it sounds like old school and old-fashioned, but I'm just the kind of person that thinks, yeah, for game certificate 15, do you really want a five or six-year-old exposed to that? Where's my where's my stability knife? I can't, there it is. Lock up your daughters. A stability knife is out. So I need, uh, what was it now? 53 and 52 on the other side. So I need... 53 and also on 52 so we have a 51 52 if i get my head in shot i apologize put you there 51 52 there we go 52 53 so i want two 52s and i'm gonna guess it's two lots of because it'll be the same on the other side as well so dude do, 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 If you're wondering why I'm wearing gloves, um, it's really because I haven't varnished, like I said, I hadn't varnished the model, so I want to keep hand jam off it, but also it's to protect the paintwork because they are acrylics. And if you've ever painted with Citadel paints, some of these are airbrushed on, but if you've ever painted with them, you'll know they're not the most durable paints in the world. They do tend to chip and rub off quite easily. So uh, I'm just minimizing how much physical hand contact I'm having with them, with the paint, just to avoid it chipping away. I did put some decals on one of the um, fin funnel packs uh, and the, the paint from the very top of the fin of the funnels that was in the top, not fin funnels, the funnels, um, that's already rubbed away to primer just because I was handling them while doing some checker painting. So I am consciously aware uh, of that. I, I will be a lot of touch up to do. I, I know that. If ever you're working with, say, Citadel Paints, uh, which way around does this go now? That goes that way. 52 is that way. Okay, so that's 52. So let's do the 53 first. So I've got that bit there. And on this side, it's that one. So basically, I've got here, I've got four sets of decals that are chiral. So some face that way, two face that way. Uh, on this side, I need to put that one where does it go there and on the other side i can't do that because it'll the little square and that you won't be able to see on camera this little tiny square needs to go into the recess that's where the other one comes in and that goes the other way so what i'll need to do is do one on this leg here and then do one on that leg I'll do them both the same basically because these are identical so it doesn't matter if they're left or right so we shall see we'll get them both in the water was talking about got no idea that's better just sending to my mac to watch this instead of on my phone yeah i don't understand people that watch anything on their phones i mean it's bad enough watching something on your ipad but if you've got access to a proper desktop computer of some sort or even a tablet of some sort why would you not just watch it on your big telly, on your screen? Or even if you're just doing it on a games console or something. Don't some people that watch things on their phones. If they've got the option. I know if you're like, if you, you may be in a situation where that's all you've actually got. Like you're out or you're at work or something. Okay, that makes sense. But if you sat at home. Do, 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 do. Uh, Raging Basis says, I've spent some monies at Goblin helping you out, Fox. To be honest, I've used your link three times this week. Thank you very much, dude. I really super appreciate it. I've seen the numbers getting bigger on my uh, little dash, my little Goblin uh, affiliate dashboard. So thank you very much. I super appreciate that. Uh, right, so we've got these little decals here. 
what we're going to do is we're going to get the cocktail stick you know how decals work uh where's the camera there it is i'll move it where's the camera now it's there you know how decals work now let's address the elephant in the room and now i'm not talking about american politics um i haven't lost varnish this uh, nor did i intend to uh, I used to always gloss varnish de before decaling, religiously, uh, because that's what I thought you were supposed to do. However, you don't actually have to do that. Uh, it's not it's not advisable that you don't do it every single time. There are times when maybe you might want to. You know, if it's a particularly rough paint surface, for example, or. If you really want to protect the paint. Now I know I'm going to get shouted at for using metal tweezers to move decals. Uh, I always do. But I always say I've been doing this for 30 years and I haven't yet ripped a decal with a metal, pair of metal tweezers. So don't panic. Do I recommend you use metal tweezers? You might want to use a cocktail stick instead. But don't tell me off. Uh, yes, I've not gloss varnished. Because I'm familiar enough with the Bandai decals to know... That in most cases they're actually pretty good and they won't silver up if it was unknown decals that i wasn't familiar with yeah then I'm, like i might have glossed up in advance like the sazabi the uh, shanghai dragons ones obviously they're third party decals and i'd be like eh, they might not work very well we'll have to put some gloss down but i just thought i'll risk it for a biscuit we'll just see what happens and that first one went on okay oh like that which just totally fell off and then came off onto the card brilliant now let's go on that right apologies if i keep going off let me move the i can't really move the camera towards me because then i'll bang it on my head every five seconds uh, but if i move that out of the way so there we go a little bit of water so it's more just experience but yes i i always used to do it um but after hearing enough people say that they've never used gloss or they don't use gloss varnish or it doesn't give you any massive benefits in most cases i thought i'd give it a go try it without because the idea is the gloss varnish gives a smooth surface and helps prevent silvering which is where you get air trapped under the water slide decal but given the fact that i'm using decal setting solutions anyway that shouldn't really make a difference it does however a gloss surface does mean that you have less situations where a decal refuses to move because of course it's got a smooth surface but sometimes it's a, a toss-up between can i really be bothered gloss varnishing it when it's a minimal effect now when i finish putting these on i will gloss varnish i'll probably well I'll varnish the gloss on my, i don't know yet but i will do a varnish coat to protect them because i've got some what i have planned will benefit from a varnish coat so we've got those four decals on so we're going to give them a course of micro set first of all just to get them bedded down quickly oops or just moving around actually just just as good you could do that as well if they wanted now notice I'm not drowning them in microset, I'm just touching it to the decal. The other reason I didn't want to use a gloss varnish and I've gone off gloss varnishes. Uh, anyway, to finish the story, yes, I, so I'd heard enough people say they didn't use them. So I tested it out a uh, year before last, or last year. I tested it out on the E-Model Christmas stream with Digital Tanks. I just put the GW decals right on top of the matte paint. And you know what? It was fine. They came out fine so i know just from experience now that bandai decals and games workshop decals don't have any problems if you apply them directly onto acrylic paints and it does mean the advantage for me is i'm not having to then worry about the gloss varnish being eaten around by the decal setting solutions because what you can find sometimes is if you put a lot of decal setting solution on on your decal and it's got a gloss varnish it can eat into the gloss varnish and then if you do say gunk wash or something later on you get a load of oil paint or enamels or streaking paints and they go into the little recess that they've been eaten away and you get this watermark that you can't get rid of without removing the gloss varnish so yeah so i've just uh, 
I don't think I've actually done a gloss varnish coat before decal since then. And it's been fine. It's been fine. Just make sure. I just have to make sure I'm doing a lot of, you know, the decal setting solutions. Like this one here, like I said, it's very shiny. And there is a little bit of, you can, you can actually see, I mean, I can see here, not necessarily silvering, but I can see the clear coat. But that's because it's got, it's a third party decal, it's custom made. It's got a thick coat, so it's a little bit of sort of, I don't know if you really want kind to of call it silvering, but I know that with successive coats of micro set, mi with, with uh, micro sole, and then once with the gloss varnish over the top and a, uh, then a matte varnish over that, that will actually sort itself out quite nicely. So what speak of the devil, what I will do is give it another coat of micro sole. Get that on there. Dude. Do, 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 do. Now I'm going to be doing this all night. So uh, if you want to go and check out Colin's stream, it's um, Festa 67's workshop where he's doing a buddy build with a really bad Ravel helicopter kit and it's deliberately a bad helicopter kit. Um, do feel free. Don't worry about it. If, you, if that's your thing, feel free. <laughs> I'm not going to not going to tell you not to. I say I'm going to be doing decals all night. So uh brandon patterson says that dragon looks familiar what's it from it's uh the guy that I'm making this for george my patron he likes the shanghai dragons overwatch team and that's their logo it's being painted up in the color scheme of the shanghai dragons is the Cesarbe in the shanghai dragons color scheme but it will also be given a borderlands paint job as well just to make it even more awesome even more awesome so it's the shanghai dragons dragon thing and when I got the decals made, I had them give it a white uh, tail tip and a red tail tip, depending on what colour I was putting the decal on top of. But I forgot to get the actual official one, which is yellow. <laughs> it has a yellow tip. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of masking tape. Masking tape and uh, nitrile gloves. It's not a good combination. It becomes a nightmare. I'm going to get my knife of stab tear. Get that eyelash off the table. There you go. Get my little knife of stabatia. I'm going to take a little corner of this tape. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, little corner of tape. There we go. Come on, off. I'm officially bored now. Right, that's just not even big enough. Right, we'll start that again. Why did I do it at a dumbass angle? I have no idea. You go over there. You pick that up. There we go. And I'll put that roughly where the middle of the screen is, which is there. I don't quite know why the screen is not straight either. There you go. It's more better, isn't it? It's more better. Right now I can see where you are. So we'll get rid of these. Do, 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 do. I'll have a quick look at chat. Uh, Beyond Hope is in. Welcome, Beyond Hope. Lewis Williamson. Hey, Lewis. Uh, we have. Uh, Do, do, do. I always started gloss was the last step until I started watching your video, says Brandon Patterson. Yeah, when it comes to varnishing, um, glossing before decals is optional. However, however, having said that, if you're going to do, if you want to do like pin washes or washes of any kind, like any kind of wash where you wanted to go into recesses and settle in the recesses, it's always good to have a glossy, shiny surface. So if, for example, if I knew I was going to be putting on these decals and then doing a pin wash, what I might do is gloss varnish it anyway, stick the decals on and then do the pin wash and then gloss varnish the whole lot. Or, you know, traditionally you do a gloss varnish, stick your decals on and, and gloss varnish it again. If I know I'm going to be doing something after the decals that needs a gloss coat, then I'll do a gloss coat first. Uh, if not, then I'll get the decals on, uh, and then I will just get all the decals on, finish the rest of the weathering, and mat coat the whole thing. And even then, when you've finished a model, if you're never going to handle it, and it's just going to sit on a shelf and be a shelf queen for all time, you don't actually have to mat varnish it. The only reason to mat varnish a model kit is because it's got too much of a shiny finish and you want it to be matte, or because it's going to have some kind of handling at some point, like maybe you're going to if it's a, you know, a tabletop model you're going to be play with, you know, it's going to play on the tabletop, you want to varnish it to protect it. So. But if it's going to be a shelf queen and you're going to put it in the in the cabinet and never touch it again, then the only reason to map varnish to finish off is to get rid of any shine that you don't want. Uh, so those are the two decals on there. That's all the decals on that part of the leg. Just those two little sort of 
warning symbols. However, uh, we're going to stick with the left leg. So I'll put those to one side. Minimum, minimum, minimum. I've also got to, well, think about logically, because the difficulty is I've got everything, I've got the inner frame built. I'm building as a, as a fixed pose. I'm wondering why I've got all, I'm kind of struggling a bit. I've got all the armor off the frame, but the frame is built and in a pose. So I've got everything sorted to left and right. So chiral left and right, so I don't get them mixed up. The problem is once I get all the decals on, I've got to put them back in here until I can put them on, because I don't want to put all the armor back onto the frame until I've done all the outlining. But if I put all the things on it with decals on the parts and then put them in here and they're jumbled around, the decals are going to get chipped. So I'm going to have to do some sort of coat to seal them. So I may do a gloss coat once all the decals are on just to seal everything up. Uh, I might do a gunk wash as well, but not a, an oil paint, but maybe an enamel gunk wash. So I don't know yet. I might not. But I might gloss, I might gloss everything just to seal them in. Uh, anyway, I'm waffling. Let's just have a quick look at chat. Uh, Brandon says, I'm at work and my mobile phone is my best bet. Yeah, that's me when he's saying, why would you watch on a phone? Raging Bass has ordered a few new paints and a new brush and the Judge Dread starter set from Warlord. Cool. Can I order stuff from Goblin in America? Says Slade Wilson. Um, they don't know if they ship to the US. They don't think they do, but you can always hit them up and drop them an email. Um, or have a look on their they're sort of shipping. They've got a shipping guide on the website. I don't know if they do, though. Uh, not Games Workshop stuff, Slay, but it does explain on the website. Okay, so maybe some stuff, but not Games Workshop. That's actually down to Games Workshop's rules and regulations. If you're a, if you're a say you sell Games Workshop products, you, you're not able to sell them anywhere. It might say, you know, you can sell them in the UK, but not abroad or anything, because you can't compete with Games Workshop. <sighs> Here's a question for you. If you know Judge Dredd and the whole wonderful world of 2000 AD, what colour would you say the judge's uniform is? I say black with blue highlights. Yes. Um, if if you wanted to paint it to look like comic art, here's a trick. Because I used to do this. If you want to paint something to look like a comic book, uh, I, 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 here we go. I'll do some proper art for it. Well, no, I won't actually, because it'll take me forever, so it'll just be a distraction. If you're wanting to make something look like leather in a comic book, what you do is you take your object. Let's say we've got a, so we've got a, a cube. So we've got a cube there. And let's say this side is black, completely black. Imagine that's completely black. This side has got some cross hatching on it. So it's in shade, but not completely black. And that, sh that side is in light. So the light's coming from maybe here. If you wanted to suggest that was, for example, black, but you didn't just want to draw it black, what you would do is you get a bold, bright blue colour, like ultramarine blue, or a proper, like, that kind of blue. Uh, and you would colour it in blue, and then add, that would be solid black. That would be cross-hatched black. And this would just be left as a black square or shape with the blue in it. It's often used for leather, is to have it blue so you do your outlining you paint it color it in blue and then you do the the shading and cross hatching with black ink um so if you wanted to go for that proper uh comic book look you'd be looking at doing blue color with black outlines and black shading and black cross hatching it's a lot of brushwork you'd be doing a lot of cross hatching and shading and brushwork if you're just looking at making it look realistic but match the colors then it's supposed to be black leather because the outfit is you've got gold for the shoulder and uh, the bits of bling. You've got a green colour for like, the knuckles and stuff. I can't remember if the boots are green as well. I've, I've forgotten now. Um, and then you've got the suit is usually it's blue and black in the comic book, which means it's black leather, basically. So you're looking at your greys and your blacks there. You could do a hint of blue over the top. Once you've got all your blacks and greys painted for the leather, you could do a very light mist coat of, say, um, uh, a clear blue colour. Like say to me a clear blue, but that will make it quite shiny. So you want to then dull it back to maybe a satin or almost not quite satin sheen. And it depends how you want to do it, but you could give it a blue tinge, but you wouldn't need to. It depends if you're doing a realistic or a comic book style. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, I'd agree it's a very deep blue with blue highlights. Blue, blue highlights according to the comics. Okay. I always kind of thought it was just standard leather because 
in comic books, black with blue colour in it, or like blue with black outlining and hashing is usually suggest like black leather. On behalf of myself, Fox, and other mods of the stream, we accept no responsibility for the pain your wallet is about to endure. What's that for? I get you, lad. I'm dreading my next paycheck at the end of November. First month staff discount clench. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. I've got a sniffly nose again the moment the camera's come on. Yeah, because our Lord and Saviour, Kevin. Oh. He works it out to heaven now. Metal Gear. Oh, excuse me. Yes, our mate Kevin works in the, the, the sacred haven. So, yeah, he has even more reason to spend all his money now. <laughs> right, so we did those two. Four. Two. Let's pick a random piece. It's left leg. We're doing left leg. Uh, I don't know why I do these streams because I get no work done. You guys are terrible. You're just a bad influence. So on these legs, it's difficult to do this without having the leg assembled because it's hard to see what is where. Okay, so we have uh, this bit is a bit that goes on the thing. That's the shin that's there no it's there that's that bit and there are no decals or markings on that at all it seems excellent i'll put that back in the box now these two are the bits that go gross models <laughs> oh i just got an achievement in destiny that's been a while i can't believe i was playing destiny 2 with chris the other day uh, no destiny 1 sorry with chris and tk and I've been playing Destiny 1 for like five years or however long it's since it's been out. I've been playing it since it came out. And in the last few weeks, I've found two dead ghosts. If you played the game, you know what we are. I found two dead ghosts that somehow I completely missed when I, over the last five years. But they're all in really obvious places, like a place that I hang out all the time. And it was just there. Somehow I'd never found them before. Uh, Ashley Sparrowhawk is in. Hi, Fox. Hi, Ashley. Welcome, buddy. Right, so these bits, this is the this is the, the sort of flangey bit of the leg. Doesn't seem to... Uh, there's one decal, one decal there. And I assume then on the other side... Yes, I should have known. There's one decal. This is the left leg, which is that one. So this is going to go... I'm going to mutter to myself while I figure out where things go. That sits on the leg like that. So yes, that side's long, that side's still a bit right. Okay, so we've got one here, which goes there, and one on the... Okay, right, that makes sense. Put those there. And that is... That is... Oh, we need to mark off the ones I've done, don't we? Uh, where's my pen? Where's my dad pen? So I've done those. On both legs 53 and 52 so I can mark those off completely uh, so I need 50 and 51 50 and also 51 yeah that's just richtig 50 and 51 okay and I've got to be careful here because I, I, I'm going along scr scratching them out as I've done them. But I don't want to scratch those out 50 and 51 because the other leg, it doesn't tell you which ones to use. Because it just assumes they're the same. <laughs> so I can't scratch it out because I'm knackered if I do that. So I need to not scratch that one out. Remind me not to scratch it out. <sighs> so 50 and 51. 50 and 51. Where are you? 50 and 51. That's 50. Cutting, cutting. I've put a new blade in my stabity knife just so I can get some nice clean cuts. Haven't yet done stabity, you'll be glad to know. <laughs> do, do, do. Right, so how is everybody anyway? Uh, how many people have we got? We've got 37 people watching right now. Holy cow. Welcome, everybody. How are you all? Uh, 
it's a miserable rainy cold day here in the northwest of England. So I hope you're having better weather than I am. But if you're not, never mind. Anyway, how are you all? I hope you're all well. Big question, of course. Dad hasn't asked the question yet, so I'll do it. Dad, ask the question. Dad. I won't do it. I'll let Dad do it. Uh, Sir Reynolds says, end of November will be most likely be sisters plus early staff purchasing of the Christmas bundles, but hell, some of them will be Christmas Prezi bound. Woohoo! Christmas Prezi, yay! Uh, oh yes, I forgot to mention, by the way. Uh, there you go. Dad asks half the question. He says, what's on your bench? Yes, it's bench and belly. Bench and belly. What's on your bench? What are you working on? Uh, what's in your belly? What have you had for your dinner? Or what are you going to have for your dinner? Uh, tell me with words and I shall listen with my ears and read with my eyes. So yes, went to Warhammer World on Tuesday. Went along, uh, met up with, uh, well, Dad and I, Dad gave me a lift. So I went down with Dad, met up with Chris. Somebody, somebody was supposed to meet us there. Simon. Mentioning no name, side Kevin Reynolds, your stream boss, your lord and saviour, god emperor of all mankind, was supposed to meet us there. So uh, we're there and we get there and we're looking around, we're taking pictures. And I have to admit, I'll have to go again because what I basically did was I got in there and then ran around the exhibition centre, taking hundreds of photographs for you guys. And then we kind of went home. So I didn't really get a chance to look at everything carefully. I just took lots of photographs. So, you know, Dad and uh, Chris were kind of looking through stuff and I got, I didn't really, so I need to go again at some point and properly study all the stuff in the exhibition centre. But uh, I didn't find the assassin because I went into the shop and bought the tickets to go into the exhibition and the guy said, he basically said, he, he said, if you see the assassin, let me know and you'll get one. But I wasn't really listening because I was still, fan, I was still squeeing and fangirling. So he said, if you see an assassin, let me know and I'll give you one. You, you win one. But what I heard was... Because I wasn't paying attention. So it was only late when I came back and I was like, Did you see the assassin? I'm like, what? What about? So, no, I didn't I didn't even know. So I'll know next time. I'll know next time. Right, so there we go. So that's there. So I need to get down to Electric Avenue and then we take it higher. So I need to do 53, which is this one, which is going to be that one there. Little bit of 53. I can just get this off of my finger. There we go. Other reason you might want to wear rubber gloves when you're doing the decals uh, is because it does make it does make it less likely that when you if you take a decal off the film onto onto the model with just your finger like I did there. You won't move your finger away and find the decal still attached to the finger. It does help prevent that. Yes. Now there is another problem I've got here because the arm is not on the on the frame. I can't quite judge what will be horizontal or vertical. So maybe a few of these decals go off on a funny angle in a few places because if it was on the if it was on the model on the armor. I could judge that, but I can't because it's not on the armour. And I don't want to set the armour up and attach it. Because I don't want to do any damage to anything by constantly taking things apart. You know, I put that tape on the table to give me a, a guide as to where the camera is. And the tape's gone now. I've got no idea where the camera is. So I'll just have to... Oh, it's gone. The tape's gone. Yeah. Sort that out in a minute. Apologies if I'm completely off shot all the time. So yeah, yeah. So anyway, so yeah. So after a while, we're like, "Where's Simon?" We were sat in Bugman's having a coffee and a bit of a Norman stuff, and it's like, "Where's Si? Is he? I thought he was coming." So yeah, he was supposed to be turning up. No. <laughs> so in the end, it was like text him, say, "Dude, where are you?" And he went, "Oh, oh, dude, I'm in London. I completely forgot. Was it today?" Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Bless. Uh, that's the right. It's the wrong. D Ooh. Have I got that the wrong way around? 51 and 50. I've got that the wrong way around. Oh, I've done the wrong decal. Never mind. 
doesn't matter. I've got the wrong decal on there, but in the interest of not wasting decals, no. where does that one go? That one goes to what we'll do. To what we'll do. Not going to. Not going to cut corners. That one goes on. It goes on one of the parts I haven't got here now. Then, or well, have I? What is that bit? No. Uh, well, I can't find those parts. Well, I don't know where those parts are. Well, that's a bit rum. Or is it that part? Or is it that part? Uh, mutter, mutter, mutter. Let's all have a mutter. It is that part. Okay. So I've put a decal on the wrong bit, but I can fix it. Because what I can do is, dead simply. Loosen it up. Pick it up off that. Stick it on there, where it's supposed to go. Oh, drop it on the desk. Make sure it's right around. Put it on there. Activate some waterings. Do 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 do. Is this the right one on the right leg? Before I commit to this. Do, 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 do. Yes, it's the left leg. There we go. Jolly good. So that can go. That goes way up into the corner. It's the beauty of water slides. If you mess it up, if you get the wrong one, you've still got a few minutes to shimmy things around and clean up your mess ups. So that can go there. Which means that one was there. That was 50 and 51. So what did I? Wait a minute. This makes no sense. Did I cut the wrong one out? 51 and 50. So there we go. 51 and 50. 50 so why is that why was that the wrong one that makes no sense at all that's is that one the wrong way around and the wrong way around completely uh, that's weird i think Very strange. No, nah, well, it's not in the world. We'll live. Uh, so that one needs a 50 or a 51. Let's try that again, shall we? Uh, which is that one. So this one, I'm muttering to myself. I do apologize. I think what happens when I'm trying to do the thinking? Uh, 51, other side 50. So 51, which is that one. Which is the one I did. So I don't know why. Very strange. Very strange. However, that being said, 51 and 50 are very similar to 52 and 53 and then 54 and 55. So I'm not really fussed. It's not the end of the world. Do, 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 do. Uh, yes, bench and belly. What's on your bench? What are you working on? And what is in your belly? What have you had for your tea? What are you going to have for your tea? I had for my dinner, I had uh, Chinese. We had takeout. I had wonton soup with a portion of shumai that I'd put in the soup. And then for my main course, I had getting my head in the camera. Main course, I had the usual Japanese beef udon, which are delightful. Delightful. I love me some. My local uh, takeaway does its Japanese beef udon. That brush is terrible for decals. I'm going to put it over there and not use it. Instead, I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to use this one labeled decals, which I happen to have there. Uh, let's have a look. So yes, anyway, so yeah, Simon didn't turn up, unfortunately. I was like, oh, was it today? Oh. 
Uh, Zadster says he's just had a bacon sarni, white bread, red brown sauces. Yes. Cynical Steve says bent another thrown together from trash thing and belly was spag bowl. Yes. Awesome. Space Hamster says wieners, shut up. <laughs> and a big fat salad for dinner. Uh, Raging Bassist is between projects looking at starting a griffin, but I'm not sure. And I'm belly fish and chips. Uh, Cy Reynolds says, wait, well, he says, well, fish and chips plus Krispy Kremes equals belly, bench and Sazabi spoons. Sazabi spoons. Ashley Sparrowhawk is on a Revel 1144 CH53 and a chicken and mushroom pot noodle is the correct pot noodle. If you haven't seen it, Ashley, uh, there is a video on my channel which instructs you how to make the perfect green chicken and mushroom pot noodle. Uh, I think it's in the how to. If you, if you go onto my channel, which you're on at the minute. All my videos, every single one of my videos is in a playlist. I make it the law. If I go to a channel and their videos are not in playlists, I refuse to watch their content. Uh, so yes, there's a, there's a how-to uh, playlist. Have a look at that. One of the videos is how to make the perfect pot noodle. Trust me, follow the instructions. Your mouth will love you for the rest of your life. It truly will. On this, you can trust your Uncle Fox. Involves the use of soy sauce, proper soy sauce. It involves the use of butter. I can't believe it's not, or similar will be fine. And it involves the use of breads. And it also involves the use of a bit more tape because that little marker came off and I don't know where my marker is now. <sighs> right, let's try that again, shall we? Right. Make this little tape marker a bit more obvious this time. Where's the middle of the screen? It's there ish. Right, that's where you need to work, Fox. Just to make sure. Where's your, where's your pen? Mark it. Mark it. There we go. Right. Uh, now that one there, I don't know what happened with that one. We might as well do the one on the other side while we're here. Which was apparently not 51, but it is now. It's 53 and 52. <laughs> 53 and also 52, yeah, it is so 52 and 53, okay. Well, we've done, we've done that one as a 51 or whatever it was, so that's fine. Ah, actually, I think, you know, here's a trick. It was the right decal. It was the wrong way around. It was upside down. That's why it looked wrong. So I've wasted that decal. Now, not to worry, there's lots of spares. Uh, and if there aren't, that's where paint chipping comes in. 53 and 52, so we'll do, we'll, we might as well do that while we're here. Uh, 53 and 52, so that's 52. Now, because I'm not doing this as an actual Cesarbe, I'm not going to be doing any of the Xeon specific decals. I'm just sticking to the 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 caution markings you know the stent what would be stencils on a real vehicle that the caution markings the little lines and designs the non-specific stuff so but things like the registry number uh, or you know xeon symbology anything like that i'm not putting that on here because there's, there's no it's not supposed to be a xeon thing it's supposed to be the shanghai dragons uh let's have a look Space Tamps has got some Blood Warriors on the bench and a Rezel I need to take apart for painting. Lewis Williamson had a Chicken Kiev and Cheesy Chips oh, and Sweet Corn in the belly. Bench is the 124th Hellcat from Airfix. Cool. Some fit issues with that, I do believe, so have fun with that, but be careful. Some fitting issues, perhaps. So Cy Reynolds says, I forgot I've been busy moving 200 miles. That he forgot that we were in. He said, oh, is it today? Yeah, we've said a lot. We've been mentioning it for like two or three weeks, you know. Ever since George originally was going to come over. It's not like it's been on the books for weeks. Don't worry. We'll, we'll just, we'll note it down. For future reference. Uh, the burger was good, says Chris at Gross Models. I had the Bugman's burger. And also an immediate dose of massive regret. Because then Chris got the, the old world, old man's burger or something. Which was even more awesome. And I was like, oh, you got the better one. And I was sad. And that was kind of sad. He got the better burger. God damn it. Uh, right, so 52 and 53, which means it needs to be square that way. Which is this here. Oh, 
Oh, look, there's the marker that I put on the table to say where the middle of the screen is, Fox, you idiot. And then completely ignored. Oh, do you know, I'm such a spoon sometimes. I can't help myself. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I was just born with a silver spoon as my entire face. I am just a silver spoon, basically. Well, I was about to make a joke about age then, but for some reason I seem to be determinedly not going grey, which is really annoying me. It sounds really weird, but I actually want to go grey. Like my dad went grey and it looked great. He had grey moustache and grey hair and it's like, oh, it looks awesome. Because if you get grey hair or white hair, you instantly look intelligent and smart and distinguished. And every sin is forgiven because you look like you just should be listened to. But hey, what are you going to do? Right, that's those. I shall do a little dose of the micro set to set some of these down. Uh, I think I did those already. So these just need to go to the micro set first. Mm -hmm. Like that there. And also this here. I notice I'm not really brushing this on, I'm kind of gently touching it to the decal. I don't want to, especially with this one I've just put on here, I don't want to be moving it around and make it float off again if I can avoid it. So just touching the brush to the decal. Because what you really want is the microset and microsol, this first couple of coats, to get underneath the decal. Because it'll, it'll, it'll move there, which is a bit of a pain. They'll move, they'll, um, capillary action will suck the decal underneath. And that's how they do their miracle work. They suck the decal into the surface and pull it tight. And that's how you get nice, flat, painted on look decals. Now the trick is, like I said before, uh, is to use them in moderation. It's temp You see some people and they'll say, right, I've got to put a decal on here. So I'll paint this whole area with the decal solution. Then I'll put the decal on, paint more decal solution on. It's not always the best idea because uh, one thing you don't really want to do with decal solutions is slap it on. That's right, Ted. I like these buttons. I love these buttons, Chris. Oh, God damn it. Slap it on. <laughs> um, yes, you don't want to do it because, especially if you've got a gloss varnish, like I said before, some gloss varnishes can be eaten away by decal solutions. And if you go in willy nilly and just slap it on, then you risk actually eating away into that finish. Now I haven't got a gloss varnish here, but it's still potentially possible if I was too carefree with it, that I could damage the paint finish because they're aggressive solutions. They smell like vinegar and paint and X20A, some of them. So really what you want to do is if you've got a decal, with decal solutions, if you're using, I don't know about, well, Microset and Microsol is what I use. There is Mr. Mark Softer and Mr. Mark, the other one, um, Mr. Mark Setter. They are a little bit stronger, but basically if you've got a decal, let's say you've got a decal here, that's your decal there, triangle shape, whatever it might be. You want your decal setting solution to go around it, like, go, paint over it and paint around the edge to about a millimeter, about that far. There's your decal. You don't want to be putting a big splob of the decal solution on. You want to just do it around the decal, which is why I don't put the solution on first and then I just put the decal up and then I get the solution in and underneath it. If you do it just over the edge of the decal, it will suck underneath and that's where it does its work. It just avoids risking then getting solution where you don't want it to go and damaging paint finish and gloss finish and stuff. They are aggressive, that's the whole point they're meant to be. So just go easy with them. Don't just, don't just slap it on. God, I love having a button. I love having a button. <laughs> He's the best thing ever. Chris, what have you done? <sighs> right. Uh, oh, Chris, I also found out here's, this is of no interest to anybody, but it is for me. Uh, I was Chris, if you remember, I kept saying that the buttons kept falling asleep and like sort of not working, and not responding. I figured out why I think. Um, first of all, I had it plugged into my USB hub, which can be a problem. So it's now it's plugged into the computer directly. Uh, and second of all, uh, I had all the little icons I had for the buttons. I wish I could show it, but I can't get it where the camera is. All the little icons I got for the buttons, I was just using files off my hard drive, which means for some of them, I had like a 3000 by 3500 pixel png image as a button icon 
yeah, that might have been causing problems. So what I did this morning was I went through and just resized all my button images to 75, 72 by 72 pixels, little tiny images. It's as big as they need to be. And it seems to be running a lot better now. So yes, having like six or seven 25 meg images as button icons is not the best idea. Uh, right, we've got this bit now. Yeah, uh, this is for the left leg. And for the left leg, it is this is the knee armor. And for the knee armor, we need, uh, uh, which is this one, that we need 53 and 52 again. 53 and 52. Whenever I do these decal sessions, I always tend to somehow start myself doing the most boring, tiniest little decals, which is not interesting for you guys. So 53 and 52 again. 52, 53. But the irony is that these could just be labeled A and B because there's like there's like 15 different versions of 53 and 15 different versions of it. And they're all the same, pretty much, or less. Not that different. Right, so apologies if what you can see the top of my head. We're from doing this off camera. No, no, not quite. I'm not quite that bad. 53. Uh, oh, one other handy tip. Keep your decal sheet over here. I, oh, my water is here underneath the chat box. There's a big, yeah, not in real life. My decal sheet is over there. The one thing I've learned over the years is do not have your decal sheet anywhere near the thing with water in it. Because what I tend to have is, you can't see it because the chat box, but there's a little metal tray here with water in. Then there's a piece of tissue, just in case I spill anything. And I keep the decal, when it's been in the water, I put it on the tissue and let it soak for a little bit. And then it comes off the paper. What I used to do was have like just them laying around randomly. And then I'd have the decal sheet on the desk and I'd have a wet patch where I was working with decals. And I'd forget and put the decal sheet down. It would soak up the water and all my decals would float off and I'd have mad, massive sadness. Uh, let's have a look. Snowman says, belly, sausage, mash, and gravy, bench, nothing, just going to watch Deadpool with my nephew after the nerdy stuff, the nudie stuff. Oops. Uh, wait, so you've just, you've been playing a Certificate 18 game with him, and now you're going to help him watch a Certificate 18 vid. What are you like? <laughs> I don't know. I'm only joking. Uh, where are we? Right, everything just jumped. Mm -mm 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 Raging Basis says he's also in the northwest, so yep, same as weather. Oh, by the way, don't forget, this is one of my streams, nothing to do with anybody else. So if you want to do swearing in the chat, you can do, I don't care. Jeff Longman is on the Mechanical Clear Master Grade New Gundam and Roast Turkey soon. Nice. Uh, Mince and Tatties and old vinyl AMT Dr. McCoy says Donald McKenzie. Wow, there'll be a challenge that old vinyl kits. AMT vinyl kits. Uh, I can't get these decals out. Hang on. <laughs> Me must get decal from tray without it floating off into the water. I hate that when you pick up a decal and it's been in the water for too long and it just decides to separate from the backing paper in the water tray and you're like, oh no, the worst thing ever. Right, so this needs to be like, where's my knee? So it needs to be... How does that go on? Like that. Okay. Yes, I don't know the actual verticals and horizontals here, unfortunately, because these aren't in situ on the armour. So, I'm having to kind of wing it a bit. So it's entirely possible that some of these will be not quite horizontal when they're on the armour. But then again, I'm not having the armour in a standing straight up position. The armour will be in a pose, so end of the world yeah i'll tell you what the uh, channel you should subscribe to if you don't already is a channel called the 8-bit guy uh the guy that he just he, he talks and deals with vintage computers 8-bit ideally stuff from the 8-bit era uh, it's a really good channel he takes things apart and he, re he like restores them and stuff but the reason you should watch his channel subscribe to is purely 100% for his theme tune not on all his videos because some of the older ones but on like the last couple of years 
his theme, his opening theme tune. It's like literally about five. Hang on. Yeah, it's about seven or eight seconds long, and it's just fantastic. It's the most crispest 1980s style synth music you can imagine. It's fantastic. I can't really explain why I find it so hourly pleasing. It just is spot on. That's there. Oops. That's down on the floor. That's there. So it needs to be roughly like that. There we go. Do 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 do. Uh, what else? We let's the uh, uh, it's the wrong brush. I've got the wrong brush completely. Some other channels you subscribe to. What channels should you subscribe to? There are many good channels out there. Up is not jump is a great channel. Uh, Up is not jump is a gaming channel, but it's more just he does conversations about things. His um, his video about playing Elite Dangerous in VR is absolutely hilarious. Also, his cat, Sid, I think it's Sid, uh, talks like a Khajiit, which is fantastic. Up is not jump. Go and subscribe to that. Do, 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 do. Put that there. Uh, we have, next one, is this piece. I don't really know where this, I think this is, is this like the, yeah, this is like the other side of the leg, so... It does need some stripage, but it needs stripage. Again, it's difficult because it's not in situ. So it's stripe number 127 and 124 on the other side. Hang on, was that the left leg or the right leg? Oh. That's going to be the left leg. Okay, because on the left leg, they'll go 127, 124, which will be there. Right, I'm just going to do some thinking now. 127 to 124. Huh? Well, that's the way around for a start. Oh, one twenty seven is there, you spoon bender. Right, so one twenty seven is there, one twenty four is there. And 125, 126, 125 and 126. Okay, so yeah, all right, so that's that one. 127, uh, 125. What's talking about? I've got no idea. I'll come back to the chat in a second. 127. Dad says he's found Barry's tea in Asda. Fantastic. Barry's tea. I don't drink tea. I'm a coffee drinker. However, Mama Fox, about a year ago, kind of accidentally bought like six, an enormous bag of 600 tea bags of Barry's tea. When she discovered how to do the Amazon order food and it turns up within the hour thing. 125 I want. Uh, so this big bag of Barry's tea turned up. Uh, now I don't like tea, but I tried one. And you know what? It was absolutely delightful. So I became a convert to Barry's tea. 125, 126. Looks like the right one. So I know people like Yorkshire tea and Tetley tea and stuff. So, you know what? They're minging. But Barry's tea. Oh, Barry's tea. Oh, you can taste the Kelpie. It's fantastic. It's just like awesome stuff. Good old proper Irish tea. I don't know what proper Irish tea actually means, but it's proper Irish tea. Barry's tea. You can't beat it. So, yeah, we have lots of that. So, I'll drink that. I've got this. That's what I'm drinking here, you see. Barry's tea. But the thing is, although I'm a, when I drink coffee, I don't have any sugar, I can't drink tea without sugar. 
can't make coffee without a tea without sugar. Uh, Quano Man says Bench is a 172nd Luke Skywalker in his X Wing pilot outfit and R2D2, and Belly has 69 trillion biscuits. Good, you, you've done it. You know what? You, you, you can't do You know how the rules you can't just say biscuits and then not say what biscuits they are. A bit like pizza and curry or something, you have to explain. So, which ones are they? <laughs> Raging Basis says, I hope you're okay with Yorkshire tea. Yeah. There, horrible stuff. Yorkshire tea rules, says Dad. No, it doesn't. Barry's tea is far superior. Now you've got Barry's tea. If you want Barry's tea, if you, I mean, if you want be the best tea, have Barry's tea, then you'll never drink Yorkshire tea nonsense again. Trust me on that. You'll never drink that Tetley's ribbage rubbish or PG tips drivel. Nonsense. Uh, Cy Reynolds posts up a link for the perfect pot noodle. Thank you very much. Nim Sindarin says, Hi, guys. Wanted to pop in before I head off to work. Have a good day at work, Nim. Thanks for popping in. It's a light bake tonight, so that's a good thing. Have a good bake, Nimster, says Si. Oh, I baked a steak pie, steak and ale pie at work today. If you want to see it, I'll post in the Boom Hut if allowed. Dude, you're allowed to post food pics in the Boom Hut because it's my group and I decide. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, steak and ale pie, of course you're allowed to post it. Pie is most certainly permitted, says Cy Reynolds. Absolutely. Um, KBZ Doofus says, Just checking in to add, the belly was chipotle, carnitas bowl, benches continue work on the clear bits from my R34 M spec project. Says I'll be back on the bench to get weathered for the next deadline. I won't make the next deadline either. Uh, right, let's get these stripey stripes done. So this is tricky. Now, again, this is doing this all out of context and out of situ, so... Uh, this needs to be a regular line here. A bit more water on that, I think. It's not quite detached itself. A little ne'er do well. Now, this one is kind of floating in midair, it doesn't have a, a distinct jumping off point. So, like I've got a panel line to line it up against. I have really, in a way, I suppose. Little bit of water. Do it where the mark is, Fox. Do it where the mark is. You know the rules. So this needs to go way up there. It's way in the wrong place. A lot of people use a brush to uh, move their decals around, but you know what? I can't. I can't do that. They just never move. Got an itchy nose today as well. So I'll wet it and then move it with my, move it with cocktail stick. Go on, move, damn you! Or use your finger. It's much faster. Much faster. Uh, right, so that goes there. This is one thing that might happen with without a gloss coat is that the water absorbs in dead quickly and your decals becomes a pain to move around. So yeah, there are some advantages to using a gloss coat first. Now on this one, how did I? These even match up roughly. No, cool. Ignore me, I'm just muttering. Uh, that seems about right, almost. Maybe not quite. Cool. Do, 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 do. There we go. Close enough. Close enough. I'm just going to gently roll a cotton bud across this. Long stringy decals can be a pain, so just roll your cotton bud across like that. Don't put on massive pressure, just a little bit of pressure, because you're just squeezing out all the air from underneath, which helps reduce silvering. Helps push it down into the paint finish, if it's an uneven paint finish. And then when we come to uh, put some solution on that, it'll help it stick even more. Now the next decal is upside down, which means it's probably stuck to the tissue. Yes, probably. Oh, in fact, it's vanished. Where's my other stripe gone? Oh, lack of day and lamentations. We've lost the decal. So where's the other one gone? Do you know? I hate when this happens. A whole decal just vanishes. Yeah, we've lost an entire decal. 
Well, just arse. Well, that's knack of that then, isn't it? Yo! Oh, butt cheeks. Where's it gone? There's just a whole decal just vanished. I don't understand. I mean, luckily, it's just a little white line there, so it's not the end of the world if I do without it, but... <clears throat> That's kind of, it's not on my T-shirt. It's not on there. Oh, there's always at least one decal that does this. It's it's like you you put your arm on the desk and it sticks to your arm and you don't realise, and then you, it's about three hours later, you suddenly find a decal on your arm. And you're like, oh, oh well, we've lost a decal somewhere. I can't see it on the floor. It's not... It's there. <laughs> it's on my hand. Oh, can I get it off my hand now without ripping it? Let's find out. Yes. Yes. He shoots. He scores. He drops. I don't know which is the right way around. I think it's that way around. Let's do an experiment. Oh, yes. Get in. He shoots. He scores. You beauty. Yeah, just be wary of where you're putting your hands on the desk if you've got decals lying around. Whoa. Okay, so if we're lucky, that's the right way around. It's got a certain shape to it, so I must have put my hand on the desk and it's just sucked the decal off the backing paper. Because the hand's right there where the decal stuff is, so. Whoa. I think that's the right way around. If it comes off in, you know, with, with little effort, then I know I've got it the wrong way around. And we just flip it over. So that goes there. <coughs> Might actually be upside down, actually, I think. Might not be the right way around, or is it? I can't quite tell. Mm. Might be upside down. Let's turn it over. That's why I love water slides. You can fiddle around with them like there he is better. That makes more sense, I think. Yeah, it's bedding down a bit more. Whew, that was lucky, that was. Do, 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 do. I think. See, the difficulty here is you've got these to line up, and it's where they line up to. Hmm. Diddly bomb, diddly bomb, diddly bomb. Super match game. This is where you have difficulty now because some of these might not line up perfectly and I've got to get them exactly right. Of course, if I get any of them ever so slightly wrong, that's where paint chipping and mud splatters come in. <laughs> oh, yes. I went there. That's what weathering is for, to hide all your sins. Get that one on. So the difficulty we have here is that these go on either side of the leg like that. And there's pieces in between which actually also have stripy decals on them as well. Find another one. Now I don't want to mount these to the leg. So that one goes there. And that one goes there. So theoretically, as long as I match up the stripe on here to that, it's not the end of the world if they don't quite line up because there'll be some, there's actually a gap between the two here. So if they don't line up directly with each other, that's not quite the end of the world because they're going to be separated by other stuff anyway. Looks about right. Cool. So, just make sure it's parallel. Not quite. It's not quite lined up right. Let's see if we can give it a little bit of a wiggle. A little bit of a fuss. Let's see if it'll comply. It's difficult because it's a curved edge and a curved decal. 
and you're trying to follow the curve it's effectively a straight line but over a curved edge so it's both curved and meant to be straight at the same time so it needs to be parallel with the edges and the paddle line but also follow the curve if you know what i mean so we'll get a bit of micro set on those do, 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 do. micro set oops daisy mm -mm -mm. Now what you'll often see people do with setting solutions is I say they'll, they'll they'll put the setting solution, i.e. this stuff, on the model and then on like I'm doing now over the decal. And you can do that if you want. It it just more I just see it more of a waste. Because when you do this, it sucks underneath the decal anyway. The idea is that this stuff will soften the decal. A setting solution softens the decal so it, it beds down to the surface and sucks down and gives you a flatter more painted on look but then you also get softeners which is what micro sole does now micro set and sole i'll show you in a second they're not actually explained at all well on the packaging micro set micro sole setting solution for decals setting solution for decals softens decals and improves adhesion softens decals to conform to regular surfaces so yeah so the idea is that you, you this is the first one you use this one first to get the decal on the model and help it fit down and then it should for most decals that'll be it but if it doesn't go down it's not looking painted on that's where this comes in basically this helps it stick down to the surface and gets rid of any gaps this then if there are any little gaps so you've got an uneven surface it softens the decal film so that gradually the decal can settle into any ridges and recesses and look even more painted on you could just use that it's, it's they're all kind of much of a muchness but that's how it works anyway <clears throat> so what's next we've still got we've still got one still on this one haven't we uh quick look at chat because i've ignored you all let's have a quick mystery chat for a bit it's nearly 10 o'clock i'm gonna do some stickers soon uh, <clears throat> KB uh, done that one. Uh, can confirm is an pie. Poor Ted Fox has been trapped in a button. Slap it on. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, Dad says four, so I can't actually see this. Oh, I can't actually see this on the thing because it's, it's on the Facebook. Uh, Zazza says, yeah, the 8-bit guy's on my list. He's big on to Retro Bright. Yeah. Uh, Zazza says, Sid Chip music. for the... It's not his theme tune, isn't it? Sid Chip music. Not in the in the last couple of years. It's actually, I think it's a Swedish guy that does retro 80s style music. But all the sounds in his theme tune are so crisp. As a, as a as someone who has programmed and knows how to program a synthesizer and knows about waveforms and sounds and stuff, the sounds on that are so crisp and perfectly quantized. Oh, it's delightful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yorkshire tea is nothing like Tetley's. Yeah, they are. They're both rubbish compared to Barry's tea. Quano Man says they are plain digestive. I've stopped reading at that point. Uh, the moment you say plain digestives, I've fallen asleep and walked away. So, <laughs> uh, Cy Reynolds says there's a couple of weeks left to sign up for the Boom Hut Secret Santa. Details of how to get involved with the community and a little fun can be found here. Uh, right. Yes. Uh, if you don't know, Cy Reynolds is doing a, or he's, he's sort of running the this year's Boom Hut, Model Makers Boom Hut Secret Santa. If you don't know what the Model Makers Boom Hut is, I have a button for that. There we go. See? It's my Facebook uh, model making community. It's a brilliant, brilliant place. Coming up to 4,000 members. It's totally safe space. Uh, we don't allow rivet counting, snarking, bitching. If anybody does it, we just kick them out. We don't allow it. We're not saying you should all be yes men, but we only allow people who understand there's a way to tell someone their work can improve without being a complete arse about it um, so it's a friendly space but we're doing a secret santa uh, there is a sticky post at the top if you go to the page there is the announcement section at the top on mobiles you may have to expand that it's in the announcement section uh, it does say in there uh, what you need to do and also tells you to mail there's an email address to send the details to please don't message simon and don't add a com don't put all your information in the comments in that post do what it says in the post send the email to the address that's in the post basically it's just a fun secret santa for members of the boom hut uh, the budget is entirely up to you you can spend a pound you can spend 500 pounds it's entirely up to you what we will say is though we're doing it for fun there will be some people that will spend a lot of money on it 
you don't have to if you've got a pound a pound if you send someone a pound you know a brush that costs you a pound that's fine it's the thought that counts if anybody whinges however just so you know if anybody gets something is oh god is that you only spent a pound that's rubbish that is they'll be kicked out of the boom up forever because it's supposed to be a fun thing and we appreciate that not everybody has a lot of money i'm always skin i can't afford you know big expensive stuff there are but there are people who like to be generous and like to do things like that so there will be people that spend a fortune you know somebody might get a master grade something or a big warhammer kit. there are people in there that will do that but a lot of them a lot of people in there they're just people like you and me they don't have a lot of money so whatever you get it's silly fun you might get something really nice you might get a little couple of pound brush it, it's all just for fun. But go and have a look and join the Model Makers Boom Point anyway. It's an awesome, awesome place. You should be in there. If you're not in there already, why not? Explain yourself. Explain yourself now. Uh, we need to do... Oh, it's more little fiddly ones. I hate the little fiddly. They're boring. 49 and 48. Uh, so it's 49 and... 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 57... 49 and 57 more little boring ones doodle -doo -doodle -doo -doodle -doo -doo. if you go there now you can see mega pie i can't go there now i'm doing a stream and everything and all that right what did i say i forgot now already you're distracting me uh 57 and 49 49 49 folk handles folk handles 49. Now, I can't mess these up because only, there's only one of these. Da -da, 49. And also 57. I've forgotten again. God damn it. Brain. Learn how to brain. 57. There we go. My brain just never remembers how to brain. I hate my brain sometimes. Okay, I've got two 57s. So that's a bit more promising. So yeah, do go enjoy the model makers boom hut. Uh, but yes, there is a secret Santa. So join in. You don't have to. It's completely optional, completely voluntary, and you can spend as little or as much as you want. I must say, Fox has done quite well with not stabbing himself. I know, done really well. It's a brand new blade and everything. I've got a really tickly, itchy nose though. I did manage to somehow get a decal on my on my back of my hand. So I've done that. That's the decal equivalent of stabbing yourself. He has, dude. In many ways, it's disappointing, says Kev. Shut up. Right, so I'll let those soak for a second. There's no chat to catch up on. I was about to read my D&D &D novel, but I saw this alert. And, well, yeah, says Raging Bassist. It's always the right answer. It's always the right thing to do. It's always the right thing to do. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm just going to press the button for the sake of it. Slap it on. Because I can do that now. <laughs> Chris, you've created a monster. 26 people watching. Welcome. Uh, hello to all 26 of you. <sighs> I wish I could show you the buttons. They're awesome. It's the uh, stream deck. The Elgato stream deck. Uh, and I have to say... I Chris, I found out how much those things... I don't know, did you... I don't understand why you gave it to me, Chris. Did you get yourself a new one? If so, is yours a bigger one or a better one or something, a different one? Ted, no, we must save him. Ted is stuck on my on my buttons. <laughs> the funny thing is, on the button, I can't show... Uh, can I show you? Have I got a picture on my phone? Hang on. I might have a picture on my phone. I don't know if it'll come out there. Do, 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 do. Because I did all the buttons and I've got all the images for the buttons. Let's see what the... Bow, 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 bow. No, I'll take a picture. Let me take a picture on my phone. Well retro this is. Hang on. Right, so. I don't know if you'll see on camera. But you've got basically all the buttons there that I've got set up. But... There's Ted in the corner. I've, I'm, I can't press him now because it's not animated. But there's Ted in the corner. That's his, that's his button. <laughs> I've got a button just for Ted. So, yes. Ted, no, we must save him. Uh, right, so these will be uh, off the paper by now. But I must say, I, to, to, I must say, Chris, I did. I have spent literally 
like two days just having a great time setting up all the buttons because i don't do things like that. i go in and set up buttons for everything so right now i've got um uh is that the 49 i've got i've got it set up for the streams for the individual streams so i can you do dummy buttons in the stream but i've also got it set up for things like photoshop uh, which means that's in completely the wrong place I've also got it set up for Photoshop. All the all the sort of keyboard shortcuts that you can find in Photoshop are set up in that thing. So instead of having to, you know, go in and go into a menu and find the thing and saying do this or do that, I can quite literally just press a button and bam, I've got the select tool. Or bam, I've deleted a layer or created a layer. So much faster. I've got it set up from a music player, so when I've got tunes playing, it's automatically set to that. Uh, all right, about 45 degrees. Yeah, it seems about right. And it's quite cool in that it, it will it will display if you set it up right, then whatever application you've got running, it shows you the buttons for that. So if I've got my music player and Internet Explorer, uh, you know, so I've got Chrome open and my music player and something else. Whichever one is focused, I, whichever one is at the front in Windows, it will show me. The, so, for example, if I've got Chrome open, I've got Chrome set up on there so that when I'm in Chrome surfing the interwebs, I've got the option to zoom in, zoom out, close a tab, open a tab, uh, and something else. I can't remember what. Just at the press of a button. But if I then decide, if I alt tab to my music player, the buttons on the screen change to my music player controls. You know, play, pause, stop, fast, you know, next track, last track, volume up, volume down. It's brilliant. It's absolutely cracking, crackingly brilliant. I can't thank you enough, Christoph. You're a lovely, lovely little fella. It's not true what they say about you. You really are quite lovely. I looked at how much they were, and you've just a very expensive and very nice gift you've given me. So I can't. I will pay you back somehow. I don't know how yet. It will happen. Don't you worry. But yeah, I don't know if you like got yourself a. Did you? Did you get yourself a new one, or Chris, or what did you do? I can't remember what you did. Did you buy yourself a new one or something? Or I don't know. Did you get the one with more buttons? I know not what you did. Uh, this one needs to go there, so it's got to be a kind of mirror of that one, which is kind of there, like that, which is sort of there, sort of, sort of there, like, you know what I mean, a little bit like that, a little bit there, Ooh, wait, wait, there you go, fork handles, I don't, diddly bum, a diddly bum, a diddly bum. Now, the reason I'm not worrying too much about, really anally about getting everything lined up perfectly, I mean, I am, but the reason I'm not too horrendously worried if one of the decals gets messed up, these little sort of little caution decals and stuff gets messed up, is because this is going to be weathered. So I'm going to have some, you know, dirt and dust. And look, I'm not going to do a lot of chipping on this, a bit of chipping, not a lot. But it's going to have dust and dirt. So if I do go wrong, horribly wrong anywhere... 103 uh, I have plenty of ways to hide the fact that there's a complete decal missing either with a craftily placed paint chip perhaps or a little mud splatter or some weapon damage or a scratch or a scrape or something can be done uh, sim racer flight sim hi there I just bought a GSI 290 airbrush do you have that airbrush if so how is it good for clears uh, never used it, I'm afraid. I can't tell you how uh, how good or bad it is. Um, but any airbrush is fine for. Well, I mean, most airbrushes will be fine. But clears aren't something you have to particularly do any differently to other paints. The only thing about clear paints is they are super, super, super thick. Uh, especially things like Tamiya clear colours, uh, Ammo by Meg, some of the other ones. They're they're like jam. They're like slightly liquidy jam. So most brushes will be fine with them but you have to thin them down a lot you have to do a lot of thinning with them whatever you put through the airbrush the golden rule don't worry about thinning ratios and 10% of this to 5% of that and 2 to 6 
two things of this to five. No, don't worry about that. Make sure whatever you spray is the consistency of skim milk. Simple as that. Skim milk is your guide. If it's as thin as skim milk, it's good to spray. Uh, I'm sure it'd be fine though, because GSI Creos are good brushes. I've heard good things about them. I've never used one. I use a Niwata Neo, so. Um, but yes, I'm sure it'd be fine. Do check into whether your brush is solvent safe. That will determine what kind of things you can thin paints with. If your brush is solvent safe, it's good for anything, basically. If it's not solvent safe, you don't want to be putting lacquers or uh, you know enamels or anything through it. Because the, the thinners and the solvents and the thinner can do damage to your airbrush. So you might want to be careful there. Now this one goes here. It goes here like that. And it should go at the top here. Do -do 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 29 people watching. Welcome to all of you. You're all awesome people for watching. I mean, most of you be in the pub on a Saturday night getting sponged. Instead, you have me in the background. Wittering away as I fumble decals and do things out of shot. And the usual nonsense. Mm -hmm. Now because this is big thinky. This is proper grown-up thinky type stuff. Uh, I am counting on you to give me things to talk about. So, for the love of God, give me things to talk about. <laughs> yeah. How does this go now? That goes edge, edge. So it needs to be there, but lined up with that. That's weird. That's strange. I think we've got that one in completely the wrong place. Ah, well, never mind. As long as the other one matches on the other side, it's fine. I've got that one in totally the wrong place. But it doesn't. As long as I make it symmetrical on the other leg, so the other one's in the wrong place as well, then everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. Nobody knows. Good night, Vienna. So squish out all the air. Squish, squish, squish. Squishing. And then we'll go over with the coat of the micro set. Yeah, that's is richtig. Now the golden rules with micro set and micro sole, apart from you know, don't get them everywhere. Don't just slap it on. Don't do that. That's never gonna get old. That's never gonna get old. <laughs> that's never ever gonna get old. Uh, yeah, be, be careful when you put these things on. Uh, the basic rule is, like I was saying before, start off with your micro set. That's your initial coat, just to get everything bedded down as best possible. For most decals, that'll be all you need. But then if you want to get them to bed down even more, or if you want to try and whittle down the clear film a bit to make it less obvious, to thin it, to reduce the thickness of it, especially on like custom-made decals, that's where you can start using micro sol. To either make a decal, soften it, and conform it to an uneven surface, or just to whittle away that film so it gets less and less visible. Do that first. Get a coat of this on. Give it five minutes to dry. When it's fully, when it looks dry, give it five or ten minutes. That's when you can start adding your micro sol. And then if you need to add more, you can add more. But just make sure each time you're giving it at least five or ten minutes between coats, just to give it time to do its work with micro set and micro sol. Somebody did ask about micro set and sol earlier on, but I missed the question. I saw it go past. Uh, if it was you and you asked about Microset and Microsol, the decals on uneven surfaces, please ask the question again, but put it in capital letters or do a super chat, um, but quit so I have a chance. Um, because I, I saw the question go past, but I didn't see who it was, and I can't find it now. Sally Reynolds says, I know Fox does not have that airbrush, neither do I, but someone else may. But Mr. Hobby products are normally good if you just clear coating, it'd be fine, providing it hasn't got a stupidly fine needle. Uh, oh yeah, if you said clears, uh, my apologies, if you meant clears as in clear varnishes, uh, yeah, then they're not, they're not particularly uh, thick. You don't normally often need to clear, thin those very much. I thought you meant clear paints like clear colours. If you just meant um, clear varnishes, yeah, most airbrushes would be fine. If you need to spray thicker paint, don't be scared to crank up your air pressure to atomise the paint properly, says Kenneth M. Yep. TK says, watching a movie with my missus, so can't stay and enjoy all. Thanks pop for popping in there, dude. Uh, 
Uh, Quan Man says, Fox, I'm pretty sure that if one or more of your veins of your volunteers some stability well oh wait what if one of your veins volunteers some stability stuff and squirt some of that red stuff possibly catch up dab will be so exceedingly excited he will give a mountain of fudges i think he means if i stab myself and bleed because dad likes red uh upgraded my buttons to be more buttons says chris at gross models okay yeah i wondered if that was the case because I must admit, like Photoshop, I've got all the buttons assigned them. There's one the button that says more buttons. And I press that and I get more buttons. <laughs> so I've, I've already filled up some. Like on this one, I've got one free slot for this one. But for like my normal Warhammer Sundays, I've got no free buttons. So I'm like, oh. Right, so they're drying there. Uh, I will very quickly. How long is it going to take to get? How many have we got to do? We've got two on here, two little ones. And then two stripes. So what we'll do. There's two little ones to go on here. Looks like an insect head, doesn't it? Like there's the eyes. There's the two little mandibles. Mandibular goodness. Uh, and we've got two little straps to go on here. So what I'll do. I'll get the two little ones on here. Uh, we'll do some stickery giveaways. And then when we come back from the stickers, we'll get these straps. Because these straps need to line up with those stripes. So there'll be a bit of fiddliness. So. There's these two little ones on here. This is one leg. Now, keep in mind, this is one leg and it's taken me about an hour to do that. In fact, before I do that, I'll put some more Microsoft on the, on the big dooder. Uh, you can add many, many coats of Microsoft, micro, well, Microsoft, ideally. Uh, it depends on the surface. If it's a very, very rough surface, uh, you can you can do many, many coats. Each coat you do, if you've got a decal on, say, a ribbed surface, for example, uh, then it might take many, many coats, and each coat will soften the decal and help it conform even more. Because it, the microsol, it will just eat away a little tiny bit at the clear film. And that's why eventually, if you're careful, you can almost make the clear film disappear completely, leaving behind the ink that was once upon it, because you've got rid of most of the clear film. Because remember, you've got clear film and the ink for the decals on top of that so if you can eat away this stuff you're just left with the clear film not always possible depends on the ink depends on the decal um but yes yeah, so whoever it was that asked earlier on about putting decals onto rough surfaces please ask the question again because i missed the comment and i can't find it now right so uh the back panel here back panel is at 54 and 55 i've just done these little tiny ones all night so it's about an hour and a half two hours of work to do all these and i've got two legs two arms and the rest of it to do uh, 54 and 55. 54 and 55, is eh? Let's get these done now then, shall we? Maybe any minute. Now, I've not... Just before anybody gets too excited, by the way, the fact I'm doing decals tonight does not mean that I'm actually almost close to finishing this. Uh, I'm working on the mobile suit first, getting the Cesarbi done. And then once the Cesarbi is done, I've still got to do the weapon, uh, the diorama, and the figure. So still a heck of a lot to do. And let's not forget, uh, I've done all the base colours. All the base colours have been done. I'm doing the, di the decals now. However, once all the decals are done on the mobile suit, I've then got to do the chipping. Uh, I've got to do a gloss coat, I think, after the chipping. I'm not going to do a lot of chipping then, just a bit of chipping. Then I've got uh, some weathering to do, but not, I'm not going to do. I'm not going to make it completely wet. I'm not going to do like a ton of chipping or anything. So a little bit of chipping, some weathering, maybe an enamel gunk wash, perhaps. I don't know if it needs it, uh, and then some other bits and bobs, and then it can be matte coated. But I've still got to do the actual outline, the ink outlining. Remember, I'm doing a Borderland style paint job, which means it's going to have ink outlines all over. I've got the ink. If you've seen me do the, uh, if you what, well, if you, if you watch me video series where I do the, oh God, I'm trying to chase this decal. Hang on, come back, come back, little booger. Uh, if you watch the video on my channel series where I'm doing the Matalan, uh, the Achilles Ridge Runner, or the Borderlands. Oh God, I can't get my words out. Bandit technical. Get my words out. It's that technique. It took me about eight hours to do a vehicle that big. So this, once all the decals are done, 
and I've done the little bit of chicken chipping I'm going to do and a little bit of weathering because what I'll probably do is I might just do a little bit of chipping and then airbrush on some dust effects I'm not going to go I'm not going to I was debating whether to make it really really filthy but I've had a few builds lately where I've gone so far and it's been like too far so I'm going to step it back a bit I'm not going to make it massively dirty so there'll be a bit of bit of dusty dry, maybe airbrush effects nice and simple uh, might do some streaking but I don't know it might not need it but once all that's done, I've then got to do all the ink outlining. Then I can do the final assembly. But then I've got to do the diorama and the figure and the weapon. And there's something else going on as well. There's a bit of um, there's a bit of uh, photo etch to do on this third party photo etch for the diorama. Uh, so that should be fun because that's got to be built and painted and decaled as well. So these need to go over the little. Thrusty holes. Ooh, uh, thrusty hole matron. Uh. So yeah, there's tons to do, but I I would estimate I would guesstimate. I don't even know how long it's gonna take me to do all the ink outlining on this. But keep in mind I've got ink outline to do on the figure and the di well maybe on the diorama I think as well. The diorama's a bit simple though. But I will have ink outline to do on on this mobile suit. I'll also have to do on the weapon and on the figure and the photo etch thing I'm building. So I don't know how long it's going to take, but I would guess I wouldn't be surprised if the mobile suit alone took me about a week because it's a very slow process. It's a very slow and intense process doing all the ink outlining. Uh, when I do the ink outlining, I will not be doing a live stream of it. Purely because I'll have to just suck it up and keep myself company while I do it. But because um, it really is, the ink outlining really is sticky out tongue thinking time. It's proper, really got to pay attention to what I'm doing. But I can do live streams when I'm doing decals because, you know, I don't have to think when I do a decal much i think a bit but i can kind of do it in autopilot mode same with you know denubbing and prepping parts i can do that without you know having to be particularly engaged ink outlining yeah that's not going to be live streamed because it's incredibly slow i really have to pay attention to what the hell i'm doing and it really would be many hours of me hardly talking to you at all. So this is being a pain, this one. Go where I put you. There you go. Nearly. Nearly. Is that lined up? I get really anal about lining decals up, you know. Yeah, nearly. There we go. There we go. On. Right. So put the lid on that. Uh, let's have a quick look at chat and then we'll do some stickery giveaways. We have some new stickers to give away. Uh, Spinny Curates has it up despite my horrific lurgy. I managed to pop in briefly. How's everyone? And who wants a call? Please, we'll ship or email anywhere. Yes, yeah, Spin is a bit poorly sick at the minute. Every time you press that button, you have to give Ted 5p. Slap it on. I know. I've got it set up though, so we we'll have to press the button. It's a, it's a double trip button, but I have to press it and then press it again to turn it off. Otherwise, it stays on and it doesn't work. So I've got to remember to do that. Uh, -ba -do 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 -do. Kenneth says, if you need spray thicker paint, don't be scared to... Oh, you've done that one already? Yes. Uh, Raging Bassist is back. Uh, Sim Racer Flight Sim 1000, by the way. If you have any questions on anything at all, about airbrushes or anything, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, like in that case, you know, I haven't had the airbrush, so I can't tell you specifically, but don't be afraid to ask anything of anyone, because if, if there's be lots of things that I won't know. Uh, but if I don't know them somebody in chat will and if if nobody in chat knows then make sure to join the model makers boom hook which i'll just put in chat there now um if if i don't know and nobody in chat knows you can guarantee somebody in the boom hook will know so never be afraid to ask any question even if you think it's the stupidest question in the world though no, it's not just ask a question anyway there's no such thing as a dumbass question there's dumbass people there's no such thing as a dumbass question uh but a bit of do Paul Dittomar says, still hasn't won the lottery. 
Beckstorm says, looks like I caught the stream just about. Oh yeah, we've been going for a while. Yeah, I've got, I've got, like, this is all I've done so far. And all I did is like six or seven pieces. I've got the entire mobile suit to do yet. So trust me, this, this stream is going to go on for a little while. This is all I've got so far done. Yeah. And there's a billion to other parts to do yet. So, yeah. The other thing, of course, I can't get, I can't do too much in one go because I have to keep track of what needs micro soul and what doesn't. So, uh, is that part you're working on meant to look like a rabbit fox? This bit, I think it looks more like an insect of some sort. Like I say, you've got like the two eyes here with little eyebrows now, and then these are the mandibles. Like, nee, 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 nee. it's more like a big beetle of some sort, I think. But yes, it has a slight rabbit look if you do it that way. It's like a it's like a cross. If I put a cheesy grin there, it'd be like my friend Totoro, but with ex, extra big ears. Put a cheesy grin on there. <laughs> uh, in the oh god, now well in the same way we've got the uh, oh what's the I'm going to stop that entire train of thought because I can't remember it. <sighs> Moving on, <sighs> right. So where are we up to? Uh, wasabi peas are a different animal. They're freeze dried and coated with wasabi, like a crunchy, delicious, nose tingling fun for wasabi peas are really nice. I like snacks. Uh, do you still have a bulbasaur to hand fox? That's what I was looking for. The word I was looking for. Yeah. So, like, in the same way that um, the chest looks like bulbasaur. Barba, barbasaur, barba. The face, ears, smiley face, mouth. See, bulbasaur. Wah. Um, now we've got my friend Totoro with big ears. <laughs> oh, it's all pareidolia. This entire building is made of pareidolia. Uh, hopefully you'll know what I mean. Do you have Bulbasaur to hand? That could go one of many ways. If I didn't know what you're talking about, I'd be a little bit worried. Don't, 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 don't. But yes, I was trying to say it looks a bit like Bulbasaur and I couldn't remember the word. Right, so anyway, while we're waiting... It is the head that looks like Jar Jar, says Chris. No, it doesn't. Nothing looks like Jar Jar. What does the Facebook thing mean by a hidden account? What are you talking about? Do you mean the... I don't know what you mean. Do you, back, do you mean the, the boom hut? Uh, it's a closed group, so you won't be able to see anything. You can be able to see it and join it. Um, but you won't be able to see any of the posts, I don't think. Until you, until you join it. If you want to join the boom hut, you just click on the please let me in button. The join now and then somebody will usually let you in within 24 hours if not oh yeah signing up for the it's a closed group so yeah just click on join now uh, and if one of the mods could if uh, one of the mods in the boom could have a quick look and just like chris or somebody could uh, quickly let back in pretty much we let anybody in i've always taken the view although it's a closed group because that helps prevent nonsense posting uh, I've run groups before, and if you have an open group, you just get a million pointless posts every day. Uh, a closed group helps get rid of spam a lot, but we generally let anybody in. We don't particularly say, oh no, you, you can't come in. We don't do that. Oh, Sai says, don't worry, I'm letting people in right now. Uh, right, so today we have some, now I've actually pre-written that one. It was in my pile, I never gave it away, so that one's already got the word flange on the back. Sticker time. Have We have some new stickers. We have some war hamster stickers. Yes, war hamster stickers. Chris had some war hamster stickers made up. You know, Chris does his Sunday show. I do war hammer Sundays. And then like a spoon, somehow uh, managed to make sure that Chris has the much better stream name. And I ended up drawing him a logo. So now he's got a kick-ass logo that I drew. And I haven't got a logo for mine because I'm an idiot. And I sound like, oh, I don't quite know how that happened. They ended up with the better name and the better logo. And I've got the crappy logo and Warhammer Sunday. It's not, it's not as much fun as Warhamster. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how that happened. But anyway, yeah, so we've got a couple of uh, uh, Warhamster stickers. That printed that one upside down. Look, I'll get your money back on that. Uh, and one of mine. Uh, Nonsense Fox. The entire boomer is the finest tin spam. It's what makes it so good. I came up with the name, says Chris. Yes, I know you came up with Warhamster. I just, I'm, I'm gutted that I did the logo for you and now you've got the fantastic logo and I've just got my eagle, which is nowhere near as good as yours. I don't know how that happened. Yes, but you've got the better stream name, Warhamster. Anyway, let's crack on. So, uh, you need to do some ticket giveaways. I shall write some words on the back. Uh, I need a pen. Where's my special pen? Uh, widget 
and uh, 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 brain, brain. And there's a word I want to write on the thing. What's called? Oh yeah, crouton. I watched a video about a cow called crouton, so the word crouton is in my head now. So widget crouton and flange. Uh, Cyrus said, why don't you draw an Aquila with your gas mask in place of the Twin Eagle head? I would do, apart from the whole point of my logo is I didn't draw it. I just found an Aquila that was a, a PNG and masked it and popped it in. I didn't actually want to draw anything. Mine was complete laziness. I spent literally five minutes making my logos and Chris's I spent literally hours drawing. So it's like, I don't know. I just, I don't do myself the favours really. Anyway. Uh, I need an admin in the boom. What says raging bassist? Why? Who's who? Do you need me to kick in the butt? Yeah, don't want people doing bad things in the in the boom hut. Right. So we've got three stickers now. By this point, don't forget. Of course, there's always a gap between what you're seeing with your eyes here, eye in the eye, uh, and the chat itself. There's always a lag. So before you do anything, before we go anywhere, I need you to hit the refresh button, and then. Drag the slider across when the screen is refreshed. So refresh and drag, refresh. And drag. I'm at a slight angle. Here, There's like a bit of a funky angle going on here. Refresh and drag. Uh, I need to wipe my nose again. Sir Reynolds, please check my pie post. You'll get looked after, don't worry. Do do do. I'm going to assume it's somebody whinging that there's an off-topic post again. There's a few people that seem to whinge every time something's a bit off-topic. So I don't forget, if you do need to do anything, make sure you tick it as tell the offender and keep put a note in there so we know what you've done. Uh, Specstorm says, oh God, just join the boom put and saw a huge pie. I'm hungry now. Going to make something to eat. Yes, despite the best efforts, there are a few people in the boom hut who seem allergic to actually fun and silly things. And we've always said in the Boom Hut, you know, we don't mind off-topic posts as long as they're not all the time. And they're kind of in the general interest of the group. And to be perfectly honest, um, food and stuff is more than allowed. Uh, I'm just going to share that comment. Doodle-doo, doodle-doo-doo. Doodle-doo, doodle-doo. Reynolds won't boot him, just post reminding people to keep it civil and undouchey. Cool. If needing, I'll go in and have a look in a bit. I'm really, I, I, want, I want to go and have a look now, but I'm doing the stream. Oh, all the excitement happens when I'm not around. Right, so anyway, yeah, refresh and drag. Uh, Spid says his lazy days when a ready meal tally a tally by Eckert went ice. Yes. Right, so refresh and drag. I've got to think of three questions now. Uh, Chris, I should tell you, by the way, your book of questions about space. I did exhaust it for questions on the live stream. Um, the questions that remained were all not really suitable. It has now been donated, though, um, to a little girl, a little five-year-old girl who's very inquisitive about space, my friend's daughter. So it's gone to a good home because she'll be all over that like a like a rash. So thank you very much. I used all the questions. But it's gone to gone to my friend's daughter now. Right. Uh, this is my friend's daughter who she's five years old. And one day at breakfast, said, Dad, yeah, how do black holes work? Yeah, that's a good kid. <laughs> You got a good daughter there. Regifting is cool, says Chris. Right, so I've got three three stickers to give away. Let me pull three questions out of my ass. Uh, right. Um, let's make a T while I think of a question. Right, here we go. Very quick question. You might not know this. You might know this. I don't know. You can find out off the internet. What kind of animal is crouton? Go. What kind of animal is crouton? Paul's, Paul's question. Whose birthday is it today? Is it yours, Paul, by any chance? Pretty many people's birthday today. At least one 350, uh, 65th of the population of the world. Crouton, as in the thing that you get in soup. What animal is crouton? There is an animal called crouton. It's recently in the in the in the viral world. 
Do 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 do. He's gone. What a muppet! I hope you've not banned anybody so I can't see any comments because then I'll miss out on all the fun. Nobody's going to get this, are they? Do not have you go to the BBC News website. God damn it! This may be a fail question. I shall do a ten-second countdown in a moment. For the moment, oh, I'll wait. I'll give you some Ted. Slap it on. There you go. But the best way, just thinking about that, then the rage for radio. I don't know what the comments were raging basis because I didn't see them. I haven't seen them yet. But if you got any stick for it, you could have just said Fox told me to post it. That would shut them up. Uh, I'm going to give a ten second countdown. Ready? Ten, nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, bam, three, bam, two, bam, one, bam, zero, ball. Fail, nobody got it. Crouton was a cow. Crouton is a cow. It's a calf. Um, some woman has animals and she filmed it eating from a wheelbarrow and now it's gone all viral as the most adorable thing ever. It wasn't on BBC, it was on one of the Gizmodo sites. Anyway, never mind. Crouton's a cow. It's going viral at the minute. Chris says, "Cow." wasn't as much wasn't me wasn't a me as much as other members who were drawing the picture. Okay, I'll have a look in a bit anyway, just for fun. I hope nobody's deleted any comments because I want to read all the carnies later on. <laughs> um, right. So nobody won that one. You're all rubbish, honestly. God, can't get the staff. Let's think of some more questions then. Okay, question time. Question time. Question time. <gasps> just realised. Guthorm. Guthorm's not been involved. I've got nowhere to put him that's in shot, though. Guthorm is there. He's just not in shot. Uh, okay. Uh, question, 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 question. Thinking of a question. Do, 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 do. Thinking of a question. While we're thinking of a question, I shall show you. I made myself a white balance card for when I'm setting up my camera. I used to use like a pot of paint. I've weighed myself a white balance card with black, white, red, green, and blue. After watching the EV Nautilus deep sea dives, you know, where they go to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, it's like 10,000 feet, and they have a robot on. What they do is, before they start the actual exploration, because it's all filmed, they set the white balance, and they have a robot arm that they do stuff with, the manipulator, but it's got red, blue, green stickers, like bits of tape on it, and a white piece, and what they do is, before they start anything, they move the arm in front of the camera, and they set the white balance, and then they're ready to go then, because they set the white balance when they get to the bottom. So there you go. I got some screenshots if you're really interested. Uh, keep hold of them, keep hold of them. I'll have a look at it. It's, dead ex it's all exciting now, and I can't go and read the comments. Right, so, um, question. Uh, okay, this is going to be a test of typing speed. Okay, ready? Name the team, go. <laughs> purely down to typing speed. Name the team. Cy Reynolds is straight in with Shanghai Dragons. I thought you might go first. Uh, okay, Cy, so which would you like? Would you like uh, Widget? Would you like Crouton? Or would you like Flange? Now, see, if you, could, if you turned up on Tuesday, you could have got one of these anyway. I don't know. So everybody please look at Cy Reynolds and point at him silently to just mock him for not for remembering we were meeting up on the Tuesday, which we'd had arranged for weeks and weeks and weeks, ever since George said he was coming over and completely forgot. Uh, but it needs a squig. Which one do you want? I'll, I'll pick one for you. You can have widget. I'll give you widget. It needs a squig. I don't know. Uh, I shall give you. I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. Give you a, I'll give you a squig. I'll give you a squig. You went squig, I'll give you. See you, I'll give you squig. Yeah, right, little bump up. Right. See you, you went in your squig. I'll give you squig. Right. I'm going to try and draw this one. I always run out of space on the bottom, that's the problem. I completely run out of space on the bottom. Dee dee dee. Dee dee dee. I regret doing this now because everybody will want something drawn on and it'll take me forever and I'll never get anything done. Da -da -da. I'll give you squig. 
I eat, I eat. I never know what to do with the back of the foot when I've drawn the foot. It'll be here all night now. It's a kind of deformed squig, but it's a great squig because it's a squig with a top hat. So there's no complaints there. It's a top hat squig. There you go. I'll give it a monocle. It's kind of a top hat and Patrick Moore squig. <laughs> Stubby little drumstick. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just drawing nonsense now. But what I need to do is make the mouth more black. I'm getting carried away, you see. It's more like a shark with a top hat, but never mind. There you go. How's that for a squig? <laughs> Doesn't really look any, looks like a shark with a leg. Mm. Now there'll be a war hamster proudly sat next to all the stickers on my wood. What about all the squigs I send you though? Where do they go? Do you get all these framed on the wall the other way around? <laughs> so that's obviously Cy Reynolds. There we go. Cy Reynolds. Now you know what to do, folks. Cy especially. If you win a sticker tonight, you send an email to fox at modelmakingguru.com. The address is there. It's always on screen. If you're already waiting for stickers, that's not surprising. I have a big stash of them that everybody's won for the last two or three months. I tend to pile them all up for a few months and then mail them all out in one go to save me going to the post office over and over again. So if you've already got a few stickers in here and you've already mailed me, mail me again. If I've got six emails from you saying you owed a sticker, I know then I owed six stickers. Send me an email, uh, include, put in the title, you've won a sticker, and include your name, your address, and if it's different to your actual name, include your YouTube username your whatever it like raging bassist or speedy q8 or zads or whatever it is because like if i put blebulon on the back of a sticker blebulon won it and you send me a, a thing saying hi i'm john smith i want a sticker and i'll be like who the hell's john smith so yeah if your name's not the same as your thing i'll shut up anyway simon reynolds well done that goes to you next we have uh, another question i'll update the pie post when we portion it up now there'll be a Warhamster proudly sat next to all. We've done that one. Uh, chuffing annoyed I couldn't hang about Yorkshire to meet you guys at Warhamster World, but even more bloody annoyed it got going because of a meeting then getting the worst cold in the world. You realise that the back of the sticker is now better than the front. <laughs> it's a squig of Squigglington, says Raging Bassist. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I will have to go back to Warhammer World at some point because, like I say, all I did was walk in the door, go, ah, and take lots of photographs. Spend a fortune in Forge World, oh, and then uh, come out. So I need to go back to actually look at stuff. Interzone 88 is in. Hi, Interzone. You've, got, you've just come in when we've got two stickers left. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to go back. So there's nothing to say we can't go back down again. I was very kindly driven down by Dad uh, last time because I actually, and I've said this before, I am I'm not the best driver in the world, but driving on the motorway actually terrifies me. It's a proper hardcore phobia. I... When I have to drive down to E-Models, that's like a week of sleepless nights before I do go down. So, yeah, it might be that I have to arrange with someone to get a lift. Maybe I might be brave. I don't know. It's just I've always had a big thing about driving. I just can't do it. I could, if I'm driving on a normal road, I don't mind that. As soon as I go on the motorway, it's like, I, just, I can't. I just, it's like a proper phobia. So, yeah. Yeah, but the weird thing, I'll talk about it in a minute. We'll get the stickers done first. But let me tell you about Warhammer World. Anyway. Uh, we'll arrange on the trip Paul wants to go too says Chris at Gross Models yay uh, hopefully if you go to next time world we'll start again hopefully next time you go to Warhammer World if I'm off I would also like to come yes what we'll probably do I suspect is probably do it during the week again because it was a Tuesday and it was dead there was almost nobody there and it was brilliant because you didn't have to queue for anything you weren't fighting your way through the shop and there was but we were going around the exhibition taking photographs there was no one else there apart from a french couple and it was brilliant it was absolutely brilliant he asked to rejoin the boom hut brilliant hey she so actually you actually booted someone oh just, i need written reports about this who uh somebody send me a message sigh send me a message who it was at least on my send me a text message or a no or dad if you if, if or somebody send me a message on facebook so i know who it was that was kicked out uh, there is a remove option that stops people finding the group again yes you can block people i can do that leave that to me uh, i'll block someone later on if it's needed when you kick someone out 
if you do ban someone, you can kick them out and they can reapply, or you can kick them out and they can be they just can't see the group. I'll send you the screenshots as bassist. <laughs> I miss all I miss all the fun. All the fun in the world. Right, anyway, stickers. So next question. I'm just trying to put off a question. Slap it on. Yes. Uh let's think of a question. Let's think of a question. Um Oh, I can't think of a question now. Uh question, 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 question. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of a question. Thinking of a question. Thinking of a question, I can't think of one. Oh god damn it! Let's see if anyone sent me a question. My brain is—it's late at night. My brain is just not in working mode. Um, I can't even think of like a current event I can ask about because because it's all politics, and that just didn't start a monkey poop fight. Um. Um. Okay, then that's a good question. Do 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 do. Doodle do 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 Clark is in. Evening all. Welcome, Clarky. Chris has asked a question. I'll ask that question. Though. This is that nobody will know this, but it's a simple guess. Chris, you can't answer this question. I told you I've got I've got buttons now to do on the internet like this one. Slap it on. So now I've got buttons. It's a control pad with some buttons on it. How many buttons are there? Go. But <laughs> Chris is like, damn it. <laughs> How many buttons are there on the control panel? Clarky is straight in with 15. Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10. Yep, 15. Clarky is straight in. He turns up on the stream. He gets in. He's not even sat down and he's won a sticker. How cheeky is that? Well cheeky. It's well cheeky. 69 says Quantum. Well, that'd be a big panel. 120 says Ashley. Wow, that'd be a lot of buttons. It'd be like this big. Uh, yes, well done, Clarky. 15 is the correct answer. It's the uh, Stream Deck normal size, which is 15 buttons. Chris has upgraded to one bit more. Strangely enough, 15 buttons isn't actually enough for something. It's enough for this stream. I've got one spare one, but for the Warhammer Sundays, I've actually run out of buttons. So, so yes, yeah, so uh, well done, uh, Clarky. You've won yourself either Flange or Crouton. So would you like uh, Model Making Guru or Warhamster Sticker? Let me know, and I shall put your name on the back. Clarky, 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 Clarky. Edward Leonard, evening, just in time for stickies. Yep, we've got one left. Uh, which sticker would you like, Clarky? Everybody point at uh, Clarky, please, and stare at him. Oh, Crouton, he says, yes, well done. Cool. Well done. You know what to do. Send me an email to fox at modelmakingguru.com. Where's the camera? There it is. Uh, fox at modelmakingguru.com. With your name, your address, and your proper re- your include your YouTube name as well, so I know that you are Clarky, and we'll get that out to you. Why is mine always the last one? I'm not the fat kid in it. You don't need the fat kid to be on your team. It's always the way. Right, so there's one of mine left. Uh, I can't just do the name on the number on the back of the hand because I've just done a number question now. So uh, booger, <laughs> ass. Right, swig of tea, swig of tea. Um, thinking, 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 thinking. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> raging bassist Barry's tea is the answer. I was I was actually debating whether to see what's the name of my tea. <laughs> I was going to ask that. I was I was about to ask that. If you hadn't, if I hadn't done that, I would have actually asked that. Now, here's a question. These are my nippers. What brand are they? Go. You've seen them before. I've talked about them before. What brand are my nippers? My side cutters. The name is on the other side of this little sleeve. They're, they are awesome, 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 awesome. Uh, and Raging Bassist is the first one in with God Hand. Yes, well done. God Hand nippers. You can tell I'm getting desperate for questions when I'm just looking around my room and going, right, that'll do. That's a question. <laughs> yeah, so raging bassist, well done. Uh, you got those. So you've won yourself a, a guru sticker. Raging bassist, you know what to do? Step me an email, fox at modelmakingguru.com. Name, address, and your real name as well, so I know which is which, and put it in the title of the email so I can see it in my inbox. I shall put that over there. Right, well done, everybody. Well done. 
Yes, Warhammer World. It was great fun, but I've got to be honest. I've got to be honest. There is a little bit of anticlimactic stuff to Warhammer World. It's brilliant. It, you go in, um, you literally walk into the front door, and it's the shop. It's the first thing you go in. Well, there's a toilet, and then there's the shop. So you go into the shop, and that's the, the, that's the hub world, basically. You go Everywhere you go is through the shop. And that's fine, because basically the way you have to think of Warhammer World when you say Warhammer World it sounds like some amazing theme park type thing but it's actually not it's it's really just a Warhammer store with a lot of stuff in cabinets to look at that's based and a big big gaming area that's basically what in a restaurant so think of it more like it's your local store they just happen to have a really nice cafe next door and they've got a lot of stuff in cabinets it's a really big store that's what it really is. You walk in, you've got the store, you walk into the, the, the Games Workshop store, which is just like a regular store, but there is some stuff that's exclusive. Uh, you've also got a Forge World store, which you're not going to find anywhere else. That's the only place, uh, which is what went wrong for me. Um, yeah, I've, I'll be showing tomorrow on tomorrow's Sunday Warhammer Sunday live stream. I'll show you what I got from Forge World. Sweet. Um, See, there's a store, there's Forge World, there's a massive tech gaming table area, which is where they film the, you know, where they do the, the guys sat there and they're in front of a backdrop with like a Space Marine on it or a Sigma thing. That's where they film it. And also all the tables where they play the games. You can go along. I don't know if you have to pay to use the table. I think you can just turn up and use the tables. So it is, a, I think, I could be wrong. I think it's just publicly usable table, gaming table area. So all that's publicly open. The store, Forge World, the, the gaming area, which is rather large. Uh, and of course, Bugman's, which is like the little the restaurant where they do sell alcoholic beverages. Get a nice beer there, apparently. Uh, but then you've got the exhibition, which is the seven pound fifty for adults, and you pay to go in there. And that's basically all the models they've ever done for box art. Whenever you've got a box of a kit, uh, and you've got the, the picture of the model on front, that's what's in the cabinet. Not all of them, but most of them. There's a there's a few there's a, a load of really intense massive dioramas that have nothing to do they're just they're just there and they are incredible to look at some of the the Death Cora Krieg diorama it's really small but it's incredible uh, but yeah a lot of the stuff on there is the box art stuff and there is some stuff there that's very old some of the real first second edition stuff and there's there's like some of the like late eighties early nineties plastic stuff like the very early. Uh, rhinos and things like that from like second or third edition and they're terrible the paint job is god awful but they're not they're not pulling their punches it's like yeah this is what this is 25 years old and this is what passed for good in them days like god jesus i could paint better than that if i wasn't even painting so yes that's fun it is fun it's it's more than worth it uh it's not quite massive day trip status it's not like you go to alton towers for a day trip or you go to disney world for a day it's it's just a store with a big load of stuff in cabinets, but it's a good place to hang out. You can hang out, you know, in the in the cafe. And if you do play, if you play Warhammer, you can just go there, hang out, and have. A, you can make a day of it then because you can take some stuff and you can have a game. So there you go. I think it's free. I think it's free. Uh, let's have a look. The Warhammer World dioramas look a bit overwhelming. Uh, yeah, some of them are massive. Hey, TK, TK's back. Uh, right, so we've got these little 2D cars to do. Uh, what I'll probably do... Uh, half eight, half nine, half ten, you know, for a couple of hours. I'll get these two done, then we'll see where we're up to. So it's 131 and 132. Left leg, left leg. So these are the little bits of fan armor that goes on the very back of the leg that go here. Uh, and they meet up with these like this. So this piece locks in there like that. Do you see like there, do you see? And then this piece locks into there, oops, like that. Somebody send me the emails. That's his lost email. Let me see with my eyes. Oh, hello, bassist. I got your sticker. I mean, I've got your email. Uh, so I need to make sure these lines line up, basically, when I put the stripes on these ones. You need to line up with that one. Uh, now, they're not going to necessarily line up because I can't guarantee, because it's not in situ, I can't guarantee these two are lined up with each other. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Will live. They'll be weathering and stuff to hide sins. Always hide your sins. So 131 and 132. 
131. And 130, there we go. 131. Cutting, cutting, cutting. Do, 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 do. I'm getting a little bit of crampiness in my leg. I don't like that. 131. Ooh, ooh, hang on. Let me just do some adjustments to my trousering area. 131 and 132. Yes, yeah, so tomorrow's Warhammer Sunday, 3 p.m. I think the... Ooh, hang on. I think the clocks might change tonight. I don't know. I don't understand these things. Is it, is it the 31st today? Do the clocks change today or do they change tomorrow? Well, I don't even know what day it is. I don't even know who I am. I don't even know where I am. Slap so it on. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I can't remember. Somebody tell me if the clock change. I don't know. Cynical Steve, going to call it a night up early for Rugby World Cup semi-final night all. Thanks for coming in though, buddy. Take care. Yes, clocks change tonight. Okay, so... Oh, I've got to change all my head of titles, haven't I? <laughs> so, yes, it'll be tomorrow, 3 p.m. GMT, not BST, GMT this time. Uh, right, I've got to do these. I'll do these one at a time because I need to line them up carefully. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to get some tape. Get ourselves some tippy tape. Magic tape. It's made for sticking things. I'm going to take some of the tack off by sticking the tape down to the cutting board. And then trying to pull it back up with gloves, which is always a laugh. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually fit this. It's a fit up. Fit this onto there like that. So that I can just very loosely have it there. Just so I can see what I'm doing. It's probably far too big, actually. Let me just cut that in half. Now you can see why it's going to take me a long time to get this kit finished. <laughs> it's going to take a while. Not that I'm complaining. But I do need to get this build done and dusty. Because A, George has been waiting for a batrillion years. And I do feel a bit bad that he's been waiting so long. But also I've got all the builds I need to get on with. Seriously, I need to get... Once this is done, I've got to do the big, perfect Grey Millennium Falcon free models. Uh, but I want to get that done as quick as possible because I've not done a build, proper build for myself for a while yet. And I've got things I want to do. You know, the stuff I want to work on. And I've not had chance and I'm not going to have chance for a while. So I need to get that big Falcon done. Because once that big Millennium Falcon's done, I'm kind of free then for a while. I can do whatever I want. And I've got things like, you know, I want to do my Kshatriya. My high-grade Kshatriya, which I'm fancying doing in... Uh, hang on, what one are we doing first? This one. Uh, that one. I'm fancying doing the Kshatriya in perhaps... Well, my plan is... with the, I couldn't think... The, the thing with Gumpla is, right... Now I'm now I'm learning how to do the glued fixed in in a pose builds where you're not having to fart about making sure paint doesn't come off every time you move it. LD is in, welcome LD. Um, the, the difficult one of the difficult things about Gumpla is coming up with a bloody paint colour scheme. If you're not doing the official colour scheme, it's an absolute nightmare. Because you think to yourself, coming up with the colour scheme, that's really easy. It's actually not. In the same way that when I used to write music, I could quite happily write some complicated, over-engineered, over-produced, massively layered piece of symphonic electronica a la Jean or Vangelis. But if I try and write a simple dance theme, like an anthem, like a club anthem, with like two tracks and a bit of... It's impossible. It's the simplicity that makes it hard. So coming up with a colour scheme, it's actually harder than you think. So what I decided to do was maybe... When I get around to Kshatriya, go into Destiny 2 and load up my dude and just go through or buy a load of, get a load of shaders. If you played Destiny 2, you know what I mean. Get a load of shaders and get a weapon and go through each shader and look at the colours it chooses. And then, like, for example, if it's the uh, Hacker, original Hacker colours, it's all, I think, red and white and stuff. Use that as a basis to give me inspiration and then paint the... Kshatriya 
in that colour scheme. Maybe get whoever the hell it was that did these decals for me. That I can't remember. Get them to do me some Destiny manufacturer decals. I should have got them really to do some Borderlands manu for gun manufacturer decals for this, but I totally forgot, and now it's too late now. So, yes. So, but yes, I might do that. But like somebody said in chat, and I'll come back to that in a minute, but somebody said, yes, I've got this the uh, Yamato to do, Space Battleship Yamato. I want to do that. But the most important thing I need to get on with, it's something I haven't done for a while, and I'm suffering because of it. I need to get some builds done that I can just sell. Because one of my ways of making a living doing this is selling the stuff I make. Which is fine and dandy until it's a build for e-models. Or it's a build for Goblin. Or it's a build for, you know, like this is a Patreon reward build. I mean, this is kind of paid for, which is fine. But it's still, when it's like a build for e-models or somebody else, it's a build then that I can't sell. And that's an issue. Because that's one of my revenue sources is selling my builds. So I need to get this and the Falcon done. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I say, this is, this is you know, this is because this is being built for a top tier patron. So technically, this is sort of a commission build. So that's fine. But the longer this takes, the longer it takes before I can get around to doing the Falcon. Which is an E-Models build, which I can't sell. So... I need to get all these done and dusted ASAP so I can get back to doing stuff I can sell. Things like the Kshatriya. I wouldn't sell the Space Battleship Yamato um, purely because it's massive and it will cost an absolute fortune to ship anywhere. And frankly, I wouldn't want the hassle and nightmare of trying to ship it anywhere. Because that would just be a sleepless load of sleepless nights I don't need. So, get this lined up a little bit. I think that's about right. So, yeah, I need to get back into making stuff that I can sell because that's where I make my money. Not quite lined up. God damn. So near yet, so far. So yeah, so I mean, I've got once Falcons done, I've got my Cesarbi that I need, uh, my Cesarbi, my Kashatri that I need to do, and I probably would sell that. Uh, I've got the Yamato which I want to do, but I won't sell that because it's just too damn big. I've got lots of Warhammer things. I mean, one of the things I'm thinking is just building Warhammer stuff because that I can do fairly quickly, turn it around and sell it. Like you know, a Bane Blade is a quick build and probably a quick paint job. Things where it's not got lots of complicated stuff, like, for example, Bane Blades, uh, Lehman Russes, things like that. Simple vehicles that are easily built and put together. Things like, you know, a Valkyrie. Yeah, that's a bit more complex because you've got canopy and interior crew and stuff and all the other bits and bobs. You've got complicated build process. But things like a Bane Blade, a Lehman Russ stuff, it's just a box. You build it quickly, paint it quickly. There you go. So, we'll see. I've got itchy nose. God damn it. Ah. Uh. There we go. That's that one on. Diddly bomb, diddly bomb, diddly bomb. Super match game. Okay, that's there. So now we've got the other one to do. Same process, other way around. So yes, there's lots of things I need to do. I've still got, you know, I've got a 160 scale no grade strike freedom that I need to get around to at some point. Uh, the high new Gundam that Josh Rogers sent me about a billion years ago. Uh, I never did, excuse me, I never did finish that perfect grey Zaku. Uh, I've got my Deep Space Nine runabout that I really want to build. There's loads of things I really want to build. Things that people have gifted me that I've not got around to doing. So, we'll see. Doodle -doodle 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 Schedule stream should be the right time, says Gross Models. Shut up. Back in a bit again, Spawn has been fed back to the movie, pretending we have an adult live too in this house, says TK. See you in a bit, dude. Uh, we'll be putting Gundam Battle Op 2 on soon. I don't know what that means. Yeah, colour schemes take ages to figure out, especially if you don't have a theme or idea in mind, says Beck. That's the thing, you think it'd be really simple to come up with a colour scheme, but you just it's really hard. 
So I salute all the guys that designed all the shadies in Destiny for all the weapons and armor because it's like really hard. Uh, uh, Faisal Shastrari is in. Welcome, Faisal. He says hello. Welcome, welcome. Do 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 do. And uh, Beck says that's only the so one five hundred go on. I can still dream about getting the one three fifty. Okay, gotta go. Says Paul Tomasa. Got a shift change here at the candy factory to take care of. Mmm, candy factory. You may have the best job in the world, or at least the best work, the best office. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Actually, now I can think of one person that's got an even better office. But there you go. But thanks for popping in. So yes, I will need to go back to Warhammer World at some point. Uh, dropping, dropping. Uh, why when things fall over, do they fall over the way you don't want them to fall over? There we go. <coughs> do, 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 do. What makes it worse that Simon didn't turn up on on Tuesday is that he he's, 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 he's just moved to Nottingham. He's literally like five or ten minutes from Warhammer World. Literally, he's around the corner. Well, not literally, but it's effectively just around the corner. It's so hilarious. The one person that couldn't make it is the one that lives just around the corner. Oh, bless him. Spoon. <laughs> uh, you're not going to hear the end of that. You know that, dude, don't you? You're never going to hear the end of that now. There's, from me or Dad or Chris. We're all just going to rib you mercilessly. But you know what? That's how we work. If you're going to rib someone, rib them mercilessly. It's always the right way to do it. Okay, so that's that on there. e -bayek. We'll get a bit of a micro set on those. Micro set, to say. Little touch of micro set. Which is always best applied in the style of James Mason. I'm James Mason. So that goes on there. I've got no idea where that was coming from, by the way. I deny all knowledge of myself at this time of night. I accept no responsibility for anything I say. If you choose to believe anything I say that comes out of my face hole, then that's your own lookout. Right. Mm -hmm. mm, Spit is off. He says, good night, guys. Thanks for coming in, Spit. I appreciate you went well, so thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'll take my headset off. Don't need it now. Uh, it was the stream Fox said was better, wasn't it? Not just the logo. Oh, you thingy. Fox, have you seen my Bulma build that I posted on Facebook? Uh, I'm guessing not. What's a Bulma? <laughs> Did you post it in the Boom Hut? I don't get a chance to look at the boom hut every day. If it's not in the boom hut, I probably won't see anything because I never get a chance to really surf much at all. The downside of running like a Facebook group and a Facebook page and a website and doing YouTube and everything else is you, you, I rarely have time to look at other people's stuff, sadly. I'm too busy sort of sorting my own out. But yes, if it's in the uh, if it's in the boom hut, I will find it. Don't worry. But if you do it at you know model making guru in there in the comments, you'll definitely get my attention. Chris says, I'm off. Got an early start tomorrow. Catch all foxes. 3 p.m. Warhammer. Am I far superior? 8 p.m. Warhamster. Why, yeah, Yoda. Thanks for coming in, though, dude. Uh, Sai says, Jesus, it's like getting nagged by my nan. I just forgot that I got dragged into sort of London by the missus. Yeah, I know. He got dragged to uh, Warhammer. Uh, to Warhammer. He got dragged to um, the pop up Pokemon store. As long as you got a Pikachu with the top hat and the with the bowler hat and the business suit. Um, my new aim is to get a cheese pick of Duncan holding one of your stickers, then you must forgive. That will be awesome. If you don't know, Sai si is actually is going to be working at Warhammer World, at uh, the Nottingham in Warhammer Games Workshop. I'll start again. Sai's new job is at Games Workshop in Nottingham. So, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, when we were in the store, uh, the, the chap in the store was really nice, uh, and I, he had a passing resemblance to Duncan, but not really at all. And he said a story, he said, he, he said, uh, yeah, a guy came in the other week and he, he looked at me and he said, you're that guy, aren't you? You're that guy from that does the videos, the painting videos. And he went, oh, no, no, that, that's, I, I just work in the shop, that's Duncan. 
And he says, no, no, I'm sure you're the guy that does the, the videos. He went, no, no, that's Duncan. Look, he's there over there. And he said, as as, as he said that, he, he saw Duncan walking off in the background. Uh, and it, as he pointed over and said, that's Duncan there, he just turned into the Forge World store. So when the guy turned around, there's no one there. So the guy was like, oh, he was like dead frustrated because he thought the guy behind the counter in the store was Duncan and was trying to fob him off. And of course, Duncan was there, just, like, just ducked into the into the Forge World store. Staff discount. I don't know. Uh, also, you will get, I got to see, uh, if you go into the gaming area, I think it was, uh, you can see all Duncan's um, uh, knights for the House Griffith. All his House Griffith knights. Right, so I'm uh, going to quickly go over all these now. We've got all decals on those bits. They've all got a coat of micro set. Now I need to go back over them with some the first coat of micro sol for some of them. Uh, now, depending on the decals, most of these are on smooth surfaces, so won't need more than one or two little coats of micro sol. But I might do more just to make them all flat. These have had about four coats of micro sol. This one's getting more because it's a, a custom made decal and it's got the thicker film. So we shall give this an extra coat. Yeah, I didn't see anybody of any great fame when we were at Warhammer World. Didn't see Duncan or Peachy or anybody. <laughs> no, didn't expect to. Do, 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 do. So I'll, I'll go over these little ones again. These are actually fine now, but I'll go over them anyway. May as well while I'm here. Now, when you use Microset and Microsol, if you've never used them before, um, what you'll notice is sometimes when you put the solutions on, you might notice uh, the decals go all wrinkly, like they go all crinkly wrinkly. And some people will panic and start thinking they've done something wrong. And they'll start trying to flatten them down with a cotton bud or something or a bit of tissue. Uh, you don't do that. Once you put the solution on, be it Microset or Microsol, you just leave it the hell alone. You don't touch the decal. Because uh, what basically happens is the solutions, they will they will stretch the decal and then con and then it'll contract down again. So it'll basically it'll stretch out and then contract back. And as it does, it'll go wrinkly, wrinkly, but it'll all settle down and flatten out. So if you put your solution on your decal and it starts to go all crinkly, like a piece of paper crinkling up when it gets wet, just leave it. It's doing what it needs to do. That's what it does. It's, it's what the decal solutions do. So don't panic and don't, because the first time I've used it, I was panicking and start flattening them down. It just destroyed the decal because they are delicate when they're in that state. So don't do that. Just leave them. They'll go crinkly, but that's all part of them settling down onto the, onto the surface. So just leave them. Leave them alone. Let them do their do. No, no, no. So for standard flat decals on a flat surface, you might need maybe, if any, you might need maybe one or two extra little coats of, of setting solution like this. Just helps them bed down, but you don't need to. Uh, I'm doing this, they're all bedded down quite nicely. The majority of the reason I'm putting this microsol on here now is to try and decrease the film around the edge a little bit. Like I said, it will eat away at the clear film ever so slightly and help reduce it. I mean, the clear film, the Bandai decals are quite good. For having not obtrusive clear carrier film so when once they go over with a coat of matte coat it will all just disappear you won't see any of that also over time as well <clears throat> it will work its way underneath and if there are any areas where there's little bits of pockets of air giving you little bits of silvering it will help suck underneath and suck those down and help reduce that over time so if you do get any little pockets where there's little bits of silvering, perhaps a little bit of trapped air, <clears throat> if it's a tiny decal, just go and do a few more coats of Microsol. If it's a big decal and it's like a, a bubble, then you can just pierce the bubble with a pin or a sharp blade, tiny little hole, and then get the solution on it so the solution can get underneath the decal. Pull it all down, it'll heal up and go back to being an invisible repair. There you go. So that's the hose. I'm going to take my headset off because I'm getting a bit of a headache now. I thought actually, uh, that's not a great load of production for one night, but yeah, decaling is a slow process. Uh, it is on this anyway because I'm taking very, very great care with these extra special care. This is George's build. I've got to make it look good, man. So 
take an extra care with these. So that's, uh, for most of these, it's the first coat of microsol. For this, it's about the fifth. I will go through and probably add a couple more. What I tend to do is, I can't do all the decals in one go because first of all, like I said before, I've got to um, I've got to keep things chiral. I've got left leg, right leg, left arm, right arm, and some bits of the bodywork that are left or right versions. So I've got to keep them separate in the sorting trays. So it'll be like, I'll do all the left leg armor. When that's all done, I'll do all the right leg armor. So I'm not mixing stuff up, but also, um, Yes, I don't want, I need to keep going back with successive coats of microsol. And if I've got hundreds of bits, I'll lose track of which bits, which bits are on coat three, which bits are on coat five. And I don't want a decal to go on a piece and then sit there for most of a day before I get anywhere near it with the solution. So I work in small batches like this. I've still got loads of leg armor left. I don't know if there's any more decals to go on the leg, but I'll, I'll figure those out later. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to do me physically for decals tonight. I'm getting a bit of a headache from the... From the magnifying things so i think i'll stop doing decals uh let's have a look do 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 Simon says, also if i had come to pick you up i would have had responsibility and thus not forgot really i blame dad uh, yes i went dad took me down to warhammer world but originally it was going to be si was going to drive me but i suddenly said to simon i said hang on you're going to come up from nottingham to me to pick me up and take me down to nottingham and then bring me back from Nottingham to here and go back down. That's like four, that's like 12 hour driving nonstop nonsense. Dad, dad comes past me on the way, so. Um, uh, Faisal says, Bulma is a character from Dragon Ball and she's driving a motorcycle. I look forward to seeing that. Stick it in the boom hut. Uh, if, you, if you're not in the boom hut, I can't remember if you are, but if you're not in the boom hut, I'll put the address in the chat for you. Do go and join. I look for, I, I don't really follow Dragon Ball, but that sounds awesome. I'll tell you why I don't watch Dragon Ball. Not because of anything about the content. It's just, I can't, the eyes, the face design. I, it, it, it rankles me the wrong way. The eyes, I don't like the eyes. The, the pointy, I don't know. It's just something about the faces makes me angry. I don't, I don't know. There's a stupid, irrational reason not to watch something. But it's just, the face design just makes me angry. I'm like, oh, don't, oh. Can't, I can't look at it. Uh, Raging Basis says, I'll be getting into the stream tomorrow a bit later. I'm doing the working till four. Well, I'll still be going, don't worry. Uh, Raging Basis says, I would love to go there, but I'm liveth up north. So am I. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's worth a, a trip at least once. But it's the kind of thing where you're really going to meet up with people at Bugman's. And then there's a bit of going around the exhibition if you've never been. And then spending a fortune in the store. Oh. Uh, because there's a billion episodes. That's the other thing about Dragon Ball. How would I even get into Dragon Ball now? Because it's just... <laughs> yes, over oversaturation. Right there, going on quite nicely. So you can see with that, this custom made uh, Shanghai Dragon's decal. There is a hell of a shine to it. And if you get the light right, you can see the film. It looks like it's silvered. It hasn't really, but successive. If I do more and more coats of the micro set, it'll probably help get rid of that a bit more. Once it's matte varnished over and, and everything else and weathered, it'll be absolutely fine. It's just because it's got a thick film on it because it is a custom made decal. So more coats of solution will help settle that. The, the Bandai ones, they're fine. But of course, like I say, I'm not bothered about the shiny so much because some decals are shiny. That's going to have matte coats and all kinds of stuff on it. That will well get rid of all that. Uh, Raging Basis says, I was on about the Pokemon Center. I'm well up for Warhammer. Okay, all right. Yeah, that is too far. I won't go to London for anything. Uh, check the group chat afterwards. It's pretty funny stuff. Okay, we will do. Is that all about the guy? Okay, yeah. Uh, Gotham's quite big compared, isn't he? Hello, Gotham. Cup of tea's nearly finished. Uh, yeah, so tomorrow... Oh, tomorrow I shall reveal what is in here apart from like all the money in the world <laughs> yeah I'll reveal what's in there it's I always say I hate resin okay but but yeah I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of resin I'm not the biggest fan of resin because I've done resin it's like oh it's too much hard work but when I saw what I've got I'm like oh Oh, I need that in my life. I need that in my life. 
So yes. Also, I've already got some rest. I've got my Death Corps Krieg dudes that I need to make at some point. I'm not so bad with figures. It's big models where they're a bit brrr, so. But you'll see what it is tomorrow. So make sure to watch along. I shall reveal. Uh, let's have a look. Fire Sal says, I've put all my work in the boom since 21st of October. I also have put my Rari 100 Jag Doga. I think I've seen that, but I'll go and double check it. Uh, but I shall have a look, Faisal. I shall look for the uh, for the Bulma. Big, massive tank, says Beckstore. Might be, might not. Uh, yes, I'll go, I've got to go in the boom later on anyway, because of all the monkey poop fight that obviously took place while I was doing my streams. I've got to go and find out what's going on. Uh, but I shall look out for your Bulma and let you know. Sounds good. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, what else we got going on? So I think I'm caught up with the chat. Cy Reynolds says, and I only got dragged there so she could get into... Oh, <laughs> Cy Reynolds said about the, one of the reasons he got dragged to London to the Pokemon pop-up store, which is why he forgot about going to Warhammer World on uh, Tuesday. He says, he says, and, and, because he had to go there. He went there with his missus and his, his missus wanted to buy all the Pokemon stuff. He says, and, and, I only got dragged there so she could get into the disabled queue. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, you have to work with what you're given. Work with the resources you have to hand. If they give you an advantage, take it. That's what I say. Uh, right, what time am I on? Uh, quarter past 11. I think what we're going to do, chaps and chapesses, I think we shall leave it there. I'll probably give this another couple of coats tonight. Uh, and I'll keep an eye on that and give it more and more coats. Uh, but I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, like I say, tomorrow, 3 p.m. GMT. Remember, the clocks change tonight if you're in the EU, UK. I don't know how it works. Wherever you are, you probably have to change your clocks. Just just look for the pop-up, and, and the, it'll tell you how many hours. Uh, but that'll be tomorrow as normal for Warhammer. Stuff tomorrow. Uh, Monday, of course, will be the e-model show. Uh, I am partway through filming this. I did some... I'll show you. I'll show you. I did some, oh, I did some stripey stripies on the fuel tanks. I did some checkety checkers, uh, Mr. Torg style on the uh, funnels. And also on the one that's going to be open, I did the lid part as well. Uh, so that's episode is in progress. It's in the pro order. I did things on the shoulder, but I can't get them out. That is in the process of being filmed. Uh, but it's the stage now where everything takes forever. So do be patient. Don't forget, of course, this build is being filmed properly, like a proper build series. But it is a Patreon exclusive series. There's a handy thing in the chat for you. Uh, it is a Patreon exclusive series. So uh, if you want to watch the episodes of the build, uh, do pop along to my Patreon page. It's worth going to Patreon anyway because... Most of my income is from my patrons. They are lovely, lovely people. They support me month in, month out, and I really can't thank them enough. Because of them, I can do this for my for my job. This is my job. I love doing this. This is what I do for a living, and it's because of them that I can do that. So big, massive thank you to my patrons who do keep the lights on and keep food on my table. But yes, if you want to watch this series, excuse me, do pop along um, and become a patron, and you can watch that on there. It's one of the reasons I've not been doing a lot of video content elsewhere at the minute for everybody else is because I've been doing this, and I can't do a lot of different builds at once so yes anyway so that's carrying on um but there will be another episode of this at some point soon to patrons it will come it's just in the middle of i've got all the bits to do um what else what else what else I think that's it. Yeah, tomorrow don't forget Warhammer Sunday. Um we have finished the a big uh big headed what do you call it uh, Funko Pop so tomorrow it is back on to the Warhammer Conquest. I've got a billion packets from, uh, I really can't get my words out. I nearly said D'Agostini from Hachette. A billion packets from Hachette that I haven't even opened. I've got a massive backlog. My plan is to get them all built and put into little skirmish boxes and just forgotten about till I've got the last issue and the last issue stuff built. We've got the, the Repulsor, which is the last two, episodes, last two issues. Get that built and then we'll start the painting. Instead of doing a here's what's in the magazine painting, I'm just going to paint them properly and we'll work our way through. So we're not going to do any painting on that until we've had the last issue, but I'm going to try and get them all built because they're piling up and taking up space. And I've got much better to have two or three skirmish cases full of minis than a massive box in the front room full of envelopes and packs and boxes falling out, which I need to get rid of. So yes, going forward now on Sundays, we're going to be cracking on with the buildy buildy of all the Warhammer Conquest stuff. But well, that's going to do us. Uh, so look, 
You are all, all lovely, wonderful people. Now let's eat pie. No worries, Raging. It's what we're here for. Uh, have to go. Hope you have a wonderful day and take care, Fox. Thank you very much, Faisal. I shall go and have a look at your Bulma. That sounds rude, that, doesn't it? Uh, Edward says, thanks. Thanks, Fox. Night all. And thanks for the stream. Anyway, yes, I shall stop reading the chat that's saying goodnight. And I shall say, first... Oh, hello. Lid fell off my airbrush. Hang on. Uh, first thing I shall say, of course, is it's good night from him. Slap it on. Of course. I'll do that again because it cut him off. Slap it on. There you go. And it's, of course, good night from me. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Until next time, um, go make something awesome like this. Go be awesome. And until next time, I'll say adios. This is so much easier now because instead of having to go into a menu and move my mouse and stuff, I can just press a button just like this. Ha, 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 ha.